going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports Network. And welcome everybody back to Gary Land Field, the site for tonight's non-district showdown between the Tigers of Arlington and the Mustangs of Loretto. AJ Good joined alongside Michael Marks making the trip in from Knoxville for tonight's game. Michael, long time no see. Good to have you back in the broadcast booth. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been basketball season since me and you have done a game together. I'm glad to be back up here. It looks like we got a good game going on tonight. And uh, he brought his girlfriend with him, a uh, Chicago Cubs fan, so he's doing something right. So, uh, yeah, wave. Look at There you go. There you go. So uh, she's a Cubs fan, so you know he, Michael's done something right with his life there. So taking a look at the starting lineup, starting first with the visiting Tigers. 14-4 on the year. Their head coach is Jonathan Moody. Leading off at second base, Parker Peeler. Batting second at shortstop, Jackson Hibbert. Batting third at first base, Jack Pitts. Batting fourth at third base, Carter McKay. Batting fifth in left field, Britt Fowler. Now batting fifth at right field, Peyton Goolsby. Batting sixth and catching, Tucker Bearden. Batting at se at seventh in center field, Slade Williams. Batting eighth in the designated hitter, Reed Meharry. And batting ninth and pitching will be Nathan Reed. For Loretto at 12 and three overall, head coach is Zach Curtis, Mason Tibwell, pitching and leading off. Batting second in right field, Kaysen Springer. Batting third at shortstop, Clint Seymour. Batting a fourth, the first baseman, Carter Daniel. Batting fifth, the left fielder, Miles Moore. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Jaden Aaron. Batting seventh, the center fielder, Jackson Tragula. Batting eighth and catching, Raleigh Ellis. And rounding out the lineup at third base will be Grant Fisher. So Tiblow on the mound here, and Michael, he's had to wait all week, basically, to get a chance here to get a start. And uh, not going to see him for long tonight, but he's going to get a couple innings in here tonight. Yeah, the rain has really pushed a bunch of games back. The Mustangs were supposed to finish their district matchup with Mount Pleasant on Tuesday, and then it got pushed to Wednesday, and then it got pushed to Thursday, and now here we are playing Arlington on Friday. So everyone out here on this field has been waiting a, a couple days to play. Peeler here to lead things off. His first pitch is fouled away for strike one. Now, AJ, a little fun fact. Arlington and the Mustangs played uh, basketball back. Uh, That's right. Yep, early in the season. So yeah. these Mason Tidwell knows probably a couple of these kids very well. Next pitch misses away for ball one. And Arlington edged that one out at the end, uh, you know, a very close victory. So a, a couple of these kids on the out here on the diamond definitely want to get a little comeback in them. Next pitch is in there for strike two. So one ball and two strikes, or two balls and two strikes. One of them. Two one, okay. Actually, it might be 1-2 because the first pitch was a strike. Uh, yeah. yeah, he called it a strike. Okay. Yeah. That one's in there for strike three, and that's the first out of the inning. One gone here in the top of the first inning. Good start here for Mason Tibwell. Now brings up the shortstop and Jackson Hibbert. It's amazing, Michael, how a lot of these sports in these schools kind of cross intersect the way like that. Yeah, I mean, in Arlington, it's not like they're right down the road. I mean, this is a team outside of Memphis, so it's a, it's a three-hour trip for, for either of these schools. First pitch here to Hibbert. Hibbert had a really good game against Summertown, reach base in all four at-bats. First pitch there from Tibwell, breaking ball in the dirt for ball one. But I think it's cool to see a, a big school like Arlington come out to Loretto and get to yeah. face both the Mustangs and the Eagles. Next pitch on the outside corner, class 4A school. And a really good Class 4A school, one of the top teams in the state. According to Max Preps, the second-ranked team in the state. Next pitch from Tibwell in the dirt to make it 2-1. and one. And they're top five in attendance in, in, the, in the state of Tennessee. Their, their class enroll is twice, almost twice the population of, of Loretto. Here's a 2-1. This is high for ball three. So what's the total attendance? It, it's around 28, 2,900. Wow. I mean, it, it's it's a big school. That is a massive school. That's more than all of Lawrence County schools combined. As this one sent down the right field line. Springer giving chase just out of his reach, and the count will go full now. Three balls and two strikes. Hey, I like the effort there from Springer. Yeah. You didn't, I mean, that one was right on the line. You didn't know if it was going to stay fair or go foul, so it was, it was smart for him to, to jump after it like that. And the wind's blowing out that way as well, Michael. And uh, hopefully it doesn't blow too strong on you. But, uh, you know, you got this Midwesterner in here. And <laughs> you see uh, the field umpire looking like he's she, he's going for a ski trip and she's wearing shorts. 60 degrees in two different yeah. areas. It's beach day. 
in Chicago. That one now fouled away. The sixth pitch of the at bat. Oh, they're down there by the lake at the pier, you know, hanging out at the beach. I've done that in yeah, my visits to Chicago. It's been a while since I've been to Windy City. Kids, ooh, speaking of freezing, going to need some icy highs. He takes that breaking ball there on the shoulder. Now let's, see, let's see if he rubs it on the way down there. No. Nope. 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 Okay, he, he's nope. played ball for a while. I'll, I'll give it to yeah. him. That's the third hit batter they've had here in the two games. Now brings up the first baseman in Jack Pitts. He reached base a couple times against the Eagles in the first game here today. This team has certainly got some guys that can swing it. Got three commitments to the University of Memphis, one to Arkansas State, and a couple community – or junior college, excuse me, commitments as well. One of those will be on the mound for the Tigers in this game. First pitch here from Tibwell. That one is in there for strike one. Well, I mean, it's a Friday game, but neither of these lineups pulling any punches. I mean, mm -hmm. Arlington's got one of their best guys on the mound. Loretto, of course, is going to have Mason out there who is, you know, d definitely heavy on the fastball, good velo. So it's, it's going to be a good matchup. Pick off attempt there on Hibbert, not in time. Mason will be going Tuesday, weather permitting, which is a big weather permitting, especially in the last couple weeks at Summertown. Here's the 0-1. Foul back for strike two. Carter Daniel will be going on the game here. Not sure who Summertown's going to throw yet. Don't know if they're going to send Keegan McCafferty or Grayson Burleson when they play here on Monday. So I saw McCafferty started the, yeah. the game here earlier, so. ZO2, that's a breaking ball. And that one's going to get away from Ellis. Runner in score position with one gone here in the top of the first for the Tigers off the wild pitch. Yeah, the Mustangs have had some some lineup movement when it comes to catcher. You know, you, you have Clint back there as much as you can. And Miles has been getting some time there. And now Raleigh Ellis getting the start. Got more in left field today. He's got a pretty diverse and versatile lineup. Is that pitch? Oh. Missed for ball two. That looked good to me. That outside mm -hmm. corner has been 50-50 this mm -hmm. afternoon, so we'll. Yeah. Our first uh, home plate umpire of the game, that was uh, that was a strike all day <laughs> long. I don't know if you're going to get that replay in time, Will. Nope. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Foul back, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Or, sure, it will stay at two balls and two strikes. Hey, Hibbert did it last at bat and Pitt's doing it right here, just mm -hmm. seeing a bunch of pitches. These these quality ABs against a good pitcher like Tidwell, I mean, that, that comes to help you down the road. Yeah, he's at 16 pitches right now, and whew. replay is certainly close there from what we saw on the 1 2 pitch. Here's another 2 2. Good block there by Ellis behind the plate, and the count goes full with three balls and two strikes. And that was a smart pitch right there for Tidwell. You look at that, you know, in the other batter's box, you might not know. What he was throwing right there, but you know, he, he froze him up on the last pitch. It was 50 50, seeing if he could get him chased right there, 2 2. So, you know, sets up a good payoff yeah. pitch right here. Full count offering. Runner takes off. Ground ball over here to second. Laxon makes a play, throws over to first in time. The runner will move to third as we got two gone here in the top of the first. Brings up Carter McKay, the third baseman. One for four. In the first game today did have a double. Also was hit by a pitch also as well, so he reached base safe twice against the Eagles. And you see on that replay, A.J., I mean, you know, it looked like a routine ground ball, but Loretto is not going to see a lot of teams that hit a ground ball that hard. I mean, Laxon had to play it off his chest right there just to make the play. First pitch here from Tibwell, and this one is sent down the left field line, but leaking foul for strike one. McKay also closed out the game for the Tigers in the first. He's hitting about the high 80s, low 90s, his pitches. It must be nice to have a closer throwing mm -hmm. 90. Yeah. Mean, Loretto, Loretto has a couple of starters yeah. hitting that, but, man, out of, out of the bullpen, that's, that's, that shows you how big their school is. Next pitch is in there for strike two. That was a good pitch. I mean, the, the, the Arlington crowd not too happy about it, but, I mean, that, that looked like it just clipped the zone. And we've had a bunch of 50-50 calls, yeah. so. Head coach wasn't happy about it either as he came out of the dugout, let the home plate umpire hear it. I say we got replay coming yeah. up. We'll see if we can. There we go. Umpire called it a strike, so that's yeah. what we're going with. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. 
That's what we're going to go with. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that one will end the inning. A pair of strikeouts for Mason Tibble. The Tigers strand one in the top of the first. Mustangs do up in the bottom half of the inning. That's next on the Exports Network. Shop McMaster's Home Gallery for furniture, appliances, and more. And shop quality, shop convenience, shop service, shop local. A family-owned business with a long history of serving the region. We're a one-stop home furnishings destination. We feature brands you know, competitively priced, backed by professional installation and service. You can trust that we'll take good care of you before and after the sale. For your home, shop smart. Shop McMaster's Home Gallery today. Back here at Gary Land Fields, we go to the bottom of the first inning here. No score here between Arlington and Loretto. Top of the order. We do up here from the Mustangs, Mason Tidwell, Kaysen Springer, and Clint Seymour. On the mound here, the right-hander for the Tigers will be Nathan Reed as Mason Tidwell got a pair of strikeouts through 21 pitches. The top of the first and left the runner stranded on third there to end the inning. So this Mustang lineup, who has really kind of come alive here in the last few weeks, played really well against Lewis County, as I blanked on who they were <laughs> playing there, and also uh, had a big game here against Mount Pleasant on Monday. And at some point, they will finish out that series. And again, they got a big one coming up here Monday and Tuesday as they battle their in-county rivals in Summertown. And, I mean, that rivalry just gets me amped up. You know, we were talking to – you know, we had the uh, Summertown crew in here and, and Coach Curtis yeah. was talking about getting thrown out his first game yeah. at Summertown. So, you know, that game always brings out the, the juices in everybody. But, you know. Wait, the, wait, wait, what, what year was that? That was my senior year, so 21. 21? Oh, well. Oh, uh, no. If only we had the exports now. Oh, right man. Now. You would have got that. I mean, that, that's popcorn-worthy performance right there. I haven't man. seen many ejections. Uh, I've seen middle school ejections, but I haven't seen. Uh, first baseman and head coach got thrown out. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it, was a, it was a hoot. And a couple of parents. <laughs> Mason Tipwell to lead things off here against Reed. On a beautiful evening. A little bit of wind. It's kind of died down a bit here at Gary Landfield. It's good baseball weather, though. First pitch here from Reed, and that's a fastball pumped in there for strike one. Those things haven't seen much velo like this. You know, they, they have it, but you know, seeing it and having it's two different things. We'll see how they can handle this fastball. The 0-1. Ground ball. That one gets through. Shortstop makes a good play to throw the first will not be in time. As Mason Tibwell hustles down the line for an infield single. First base runner of the game for Loretta. And that was a hit. I don't. I don't know how many more shortstops in the state can make that throw. I mean, because that was a good throw. I mean, Mason. Mason's got some wheels over there at first, but to I mean, that was an incredible throw. Not just make the throw, but, but make it accurate. And it was accurate. I mean, wow. it, it looked good. Yeah. Brings up Case and Spring of the right fielder. Speaking of someone who's been on fire as of late, he has really struck the ball well here over the last couple of weeks. Really since district play has started. Yeah, I mean, th this kid, all he does is get on base, and, I, and I've really loved watching him play this year. First pitch, and Springer skies this one high in the air. The center, oh, center fielder almost <laughs> came in again. The right fielder there, and Peyton Goolsby makes the catch, and that's the first out of the inning. Yes. Slade Williams. Center fielder, he usually makes the call there. Right fielder didn't yeah. have to move, but ooh, close one. Brings up the Clint Seymour here, the shortstop. You got Hayden Butcham, who's now the courtesy runner for Mason Tibwell over at first. That Williams had to make that catch earlier in the first game because the sun was in Goolsby's eyes out there. First pitch here from Reed, and this one is hit foul way down the left field line to the practice field for strike one. And this is a good battle right here between uh, 
Reed and Seymour. I mean, th these are two very good ball players. Probably going to play a, a lot more baseball after this. So I'm really eager to see who wins this matchup. This is a good guy for the Mustangs to see because mm -hmm. once you give them that region in that sub-state round, you're going to see a lot of good pitchers and a lot of power pitchers as well. Yeah, I mean, even in this jersey trick, you got Grayson Burleson, who's you know lower 90s with the fastball, and it, it, it can reach mid 90s. So, so seeing a guy like this from from Arlington really helps Mustangs down the road. One and one is a count here to Seymour. One on one gone here in the bottom of the first. Next pitch, this is away for ball two. I know they got a radar down there. I can't really. Yeah, I'm legally bl I'm, I'm <laughs> legally blind without my contact, so I'm not going to be able ever to see that. So I think the the shortstop right there is blocking it. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. So you can see it right to the the right of number 29 there on your yeah. your view at home. Hibbert is causing <laughs> causing <laughs> havoc on the base pads, and oh no, we're good there. Now he scooted over for us. Next pitch here from Reed. 76 on the breaking ball that misses low for ball three. So a hitter's count here for Seymour. It's like we said, Mike, you're, you're going to see a lot of power pitching once you get in, the, in those higher levels. You mentioned Grayson at Summertown. McDonald at Lewis County is really good. And as we saw with those guys from Milan, Ooh. they they threw a lot of hard guys out there that, that was uh, hard to contain at times. Well, they, they go from a hard pitcher to a soft pitcher, and the Mustangs, you know, just, just couldn't get adjusted. A 3-1, 88, but that one missed away for ball four and two on, one out. Here in the bottom of the first inning, now going to bring up the first baseman in Carter Daniel, who, coming off knee surgery, has had a heck of a year, not only at the mound, but also here at the plate as well. Yeah, and that was a really good A-B for Seymour. You know, this year you've been looking at him be more patient at the plate and drawing a walk like that to get two on with one out in the first inning. But bringing somebody as hot at the plate as Carter, I mean, it, it, it's a good sign. Long look at the signs is Reed. And now Daniel will step out. Carter rocking the old school pants. You know, the kind of three-quarter length, <laughs> three length ones. First pitch here from Reed, a fastball. This is low and away for ball one. So the Mustang's a bunch of tall guys. I, that one was about at his feet. I was thought he was about to call that one a strike. Here's a 1-0. Breaking ball, swung on a miss there for strike two. Really good breaking ball as well. You know, when you're talking about playing a bigger school, you talk about how much overpowering that fastball is, but that curveball and that slider got a little more break too. And that one kind of looked like a changeup, mm. and then it just like dipped down at the last second. Well, they've got a bunch of kids now throwing splitters instead of changeups. My most hated pitch <laughs> as a hitter. <laughs> hated Looks splitter. good, and then drops right off the, the, uh, off, the, off the plate. I don't know if I ever make contact against a splitter. Had success against knuckleballers and sidearm guys, but splitters, no. I would have picked the opposite. <laughs> Here's a 2-1. In there for strike two. Another good breaking ball there by Reed. I mean, hey, there's not many arms like this the Mustangs are going to face this year. So, so win, lose, or draw, I mean, they're getting a lot of, a lot of useful ABs right here. And the 2-2. Two -two. Sent foul into the softball field. The count will stay at two balls and two strikes. A sidearm, guys, if you can learn to – if you're a good low ball hitter like I was, sidearm guys are ideal because it just naturally has just, that Just, just right down to you. There's a lot of D1 closers who hated my guts <laughs> in summer ball. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Daniel, a ground ball here. It's going to be tough, too, if they're going to try. Hibbert. Throws a bullet over to first, and he is out. But the runners will advance on the play to second and third. And two gone will bring up Miles Moore, the left fielder. Miles has had a great start to his season so far. He has picked up a ton of RBIs, and he's really starting to barrel up the ball here really well in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, ever since they moved him to the four or five spot in that lineup, I mean, he's really been getting a ton of RBIs, getting on base a ton like he always does. So it's, it, it's good to see him starting off his senior year hot. Infield outfield pretty much playing normal all across the board here for the Tigers. Third baseman is playing in a, a hair. First pitch, fastball on the outside corner. 84 miles an hour for strike one. That looked like it had a little two seam on it. It did. A little, little arm side run. 
And the velocity is not always measured in numbers. Here's the 0-1. Because there's some guys, and that next pitch misses high for ball one. There's some guys that can throw 95, but if it's flat, it looks like a yeah, it looks beach like ball. A, yeah. but then a there's fast some, moving bit, beach ball. And then there's some 92 with a lot of movement that nobody can touch. Right. I mean, it's, it's just the delivery and how it moves. And the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball. That one's going to get away, but Buttram. Seymour got a little bit too far, but everyone got back safely. Counts now two balls and one strike. That, that was smart by Bustrom to hold up right there. He, he, catcher did a really good job eating that one up yeah. and not letting it get more than four or five feet away from him. These, these catchers, as we saw in the first game, they can they can move. Yeah, but they, you know, when you're playing another one or two A team, you know that that, that might get by you. When you're playing a four A team like Arlington, you, you better hold up until that one's all, all the way at the backstop. I've seen some 3A teams that would have scored a run on, too. <laughs> Not many, though, but there's there's a few out there. Here's a 2-1. In there for strike two. Evens up the count here. Two balls and two strikes. Deuces with two outs. Yeah, Miles, Miles not happy with that call yeah. turning. Gave home plate umpire yeah. a look right yeah. there. And, you know, Miles isn't going to swing it a lot. That's yeah. not a strike, but. It, it was close, though, judging by the replay. Comes a 2-2. Two -two. Moore's going to foul this one away. Stays alive here in the battle. It was pitch 19 for Reed here in the first inning. Yeah, we were talking about Tibble's pitch count being up. Reed is right up there with him, you yeah. know, approaching 20 pitches in the first inning. And that's and that's good for the Mustangs. Yeah. A bunch of guys seeing a bunch of pitches. You know, hopefully get him out of this game early and see if they can work with that bullpen. Mason threw 21 in the top of the first. And another 2-2 two -two in the dirt. And Buttram got halfway down third, and he goes back. Now the count's full with three balls and two strikes. Hey, Beard, I mean, that's a wall back there. Yeah. I mean. Because that, that, that thing had a lot of spin on it when it hit the dirt. But, I mean, he blocked it up. It didn't mm -hmm. get out of that little dirt circle around uh, around home. So it was a really good job right there but on both parties. You know, Loretto not over-pursuing and, and you know, Arlington eating it up. Here's a full count offering on the inside corner for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Mustang strand two in the bottom of the first inning. No scores. We go to the top of the second. That's next here on the X Sports Network. Do you have a small farm, a big farm, or just critters in the backyard to feed? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you need to make the short drive down to A&B Feeds in Etheridge, Tennessee today. Owner and operator Jamie Ayers has you covered and will treat you right. That's A and B Feeds in Etheridge, Tennessee. Back here, Gary Landfield. We go to the top of the second. No score here between Arlington and Loretto. Do up here for the Tigers will be 5 6 7, Fowler, Goolsby, and Bearden. Fowler was a winning pitcher in the first game against Summertown, going six shutout innings and striking out eight in the process. Jason Tibble on for his second inning of work in the first. No runs, no hits, no walks. Did have a hit by pitch, but also had a pair of strikeouts. Through 21 pitches. Hey, I mean, we're scoreless after the after the first inning, but that was a really good first inning. I mean, it, it shows you got two good programs, two good coaches out here. First pitch misses low for ball one. You know, talking about you know, talking to, uh, to some of the coaches about the schedule. I mean, Loretto 
they're, they're no shy to play. You know, big schools. You got Davidson Academy Academy mm -hmm. coming in here tomorrow. They've played teams like Lauderdale County that are really good, Columbia Academy, and, and Arlington is just another another cog in the on the schedule. Hey, play tough schedule, and it will help you out longer down the road. As the next pitch misses away. Two balls and one strike here to Fowler. I've seen a lot of teams not play the strongest schedules in all my stops in the sports media world and always ends up biting you later down the road. This pitch grounded up the middle of the Laxon, throws over to first, and mm. Carter tried the pick, couldn't make it happen. So the leadoff runner aboard here off the air here in the top of the second brings up the right fielder and Peyton Goolsby. You can see here on the instant replay, that was going to be close even if yeah. close even if Carter scooped it, so. A good play right there for Arlington to get the leadoff man on. Goals be due up now, the right fielder. Third baseman here and Fisher for Loretto playing about two or three steps here on the grass. Out, outfield playing normal for the most part. First pitch. This is high and away for ball one. Pitch at 85 by Mason. And we, we've seen some teams drop some bunch down the third baseline against Loretto, so it's smart for Fisher to be playing in here with no outs and run, runner on first. A 1 0. And that's high for ball two. Well, good job holding up right there. Yeah. He, he was about 99% yeah. committed, but that 1% pulled back, and he's now got to count in his favor. His head stopped his body. We've all been there before. You see that high fastball, and you're wanting to hit it out of the park. The 2-0. -oh. Fouled down the left field line for strike one. And, and talk about that high fastball. All three of Loretto's, you know, big starters, you know, Tidwell, Seymour, and, and Daniel, that high fastball is their bread and butter. So if you're, if you're playing a team that's going to lay off of it, you're going to have a, a tough night. And Carter makes a good play there on the pickoff attempt. They're a couple inches from sending, mm -hmm. sending their runner to mm -hmm. second. Carter did a good job picking it and making sure he didn't get the second on the original play. 2-1. That one's in there. Evens up the count here. Two balls and two strikes. It's good to see Carter back at first. You know, you're talking about the knee injury. We've seen him on the mound. You know, having to go out and play the field's a little different. So mm -hmm. it, it's good to see him back at first like he was last season. You know, that, that reliable stop over there. The 2-2. Two -two. Line drive foul near the practice field. Keeps the count here, two balls and two strikes. Busy day in the world of sports here in the Masters. Looks like we got a six three-way tie at the top with Max Homa, Scotty Scheffler, and Bryson DeChambeau at six under. Good job, uh, good job for DeChambeau. You know, he had the lead after yesterday, but I believe it was three yeah. strokes. Good to keep it up in day two. Ellis makes the block, and now the count goes full with three balls and two strikes. Now before that last pitch, A.J., it looked like uh, Arlington had a little bit of a hit and run going on. It's just that uh, that ball went foul. They didn't try it there. Probably would have gotten a second. That ball did kind of get away from Ellis. Major League Baseball, bases loaded. For the Braves in the top of the seventh, they lead the Marlins five to nothing. As that next pitch misses in for ball four. And speaking, of the, speaking of the Marlins, Ryan Weathers having a yeah, he did. heck of a night in the Bronx Wednesday mm -hmm. night. Loretta Pick, kids in the stands. Yeah, yeah. I would say the, the Loretto High School Virtual Enterprise was in in New York for their little senior trip, and they, you know it's it's yeah. good to they got to see him pitch and, and having an incredible game against a you know really good team in the in the Yankees. That's back to back good starts for Ryan as well. He had a good one in St. Louis, which you know us Cubs fans love. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't talk about that red trash from St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tucker Bearden here at the plate squares around the bun, hits it in the air, but lands in foul territory for strike one. Yeah, most people around here, you know, don't have any any beef with the Cardinals. But again, well, we don't Brace have Brace fans have beef with the Cardinals. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They, how many times I've have they knocked them out of the playoffs? Will yeah. <laughs> I was there for yeah, one of them. <laughs> to be oh, fair, yeah. I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan, so we got two oh, World Series right. wins against them. So yeah, that's, that's right. all that matters. <laughs> well, yeah, we we were rooting for you. <laughs> one curse franchise to another curse franchise. Uh, that, that, that's a bond right there. 
Ellis and uh, Thibodeau call time here, and they'll get some things together elsewhere in Major League Baseball. Tigers leading the Twins two to nothing in the fourth. Phillies over the Pirates. Excuse me, Pirates over the Phillies, continuing their good start here, five to one in the eighth. Rays over the Giants two and one in the seventh. Brewers big over the Orioles nine to one in the sixth. Rockies over the Blue Jays eight to two in the sixth. Angels shutting out the Red Sox. Sorry, seven to nothing in the seventh. Mets over the Royals, 5-1 in the seventh. Reds leading the White Sox, 6-1 in the fourth. And the Rangers, the Astros, 7-1 in the third. Yeah, I'm just going to count that 7-3 and three start to the season for the Red Sox as, as a good start. <laughs> Bunt gets laid down here. Tidwell throws over the first in time. That will advance both the runners as we've got one gone here in the uh, top of the second inning. Very good bunt there by Bearden. Now brings up the center fielder and Slade Williams. Oh, boy, I'm looking at some SEC baseball scores. A&M's up over Vandy 15 to nothing. Ooh. Tennessee's got the lead over LSU 3-1 right now in go. the fifth. There you go. Corner infield playing in here for the Mustangs, trying to protect that first run. First pitch here from Tidwell, breaking Ooh. ball, and that one is in there for strike one. No, he said it was high. Oh, okay. No. Well. So the umpires may not want us to pop a instant replay up yeah. there because well, here the other umpires blocking it. <laughs> They're helping each other out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a one up in there for strike one. I think that pitch was higher higher than the last one, but that's neither here nor there. No. <laughs> that's hard hard angle for us to see up here as well, and you know he's. He's got the best angle right behind that, home that, plate. That is true. 1-1, one, one breaking ball, swung on a miss for strike two. No doubt about that one. Yeah. Middle infield. Not exactly what I would call double play depth. I mean, can't really turn a double play ground ball-wise in this situation. Outfield, pretty much playing straight up, the 1-2. Swung on a miss for strike three, and that's the second out in the inning. Strikeout number three for Tibwell brings up Reed Mahari, the designated hitter. And I was actually really surprised the Mustangs infield was playing as far back as they were. You know, you want to try to prevent that first run, but that shows the confidence they have in Tibwell on the mound to get it done. And, you know, two outs now, try to get out of the inning unscathed. Looked like 88 there from Mason, too. He really kind of reared back that one, added some velo to that. Third baseman and Fisher still playing about a step or two in there on the grass. The first pitch, and misses a bit high for ball one. Yeah, it's tough for Tibble when you're not going to get those high calls, but you know the batter, not the not the tallest guy in the world, so that strike zone right. definitely a, a lot shorter. Here's the one up, and misses a bit high for ball two. Uh, same spot, same call. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah Mustang fans weren't happy about it either time, but. You know, who, who blames them? And neither is the Mustang bench either. <laughs> I don't think they're happy about any pitch ever, to be fair. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. In there for strike one. Yeah, good, good job framing there by Ellis. Yeah, really, really <laughs> good job there. Comes a 2-1. In there yep. for strike two, they even up the count of two balls and two strikes. Hey, if the high fastball doesn't work, maybe the low one will. And it looked like that clipped the bottom third of the zone. And they got some big guys on, in that Arlington lineup, and then you get Meharry here. <laughs> I don't want to say half the size of them, but it's pretty close. Next pitch, that one does miss high, and the count goes full here. Three balls and two strikes. Well, it's it's definitely a drastic shift in the in the size of the strike zone. So it's it's, it's hard to adjust because when you get back to the top of the order, it's another another big guy. Tibble now at 43 pitches here. Full count offering. In there for strike three, and that one will end the inning. The Tigers strand two. The top of the second, no scores. We go the bottom half of the inning. That's next on the X Sports Network.
Whether you're shopping in Lawrenceburg, Loretto, Summertown, or Mount Pleasant, Tegan's Food Stores has you covered with the best quality food at the best prices. From Cash Saver to Superama and CB Foods, stop by your neighborhood Tegan's Food Store today. Back here at Gary Lamb Field as we go to the bottom of the second. No score here between Arlington and the homestanding Mustangs of Loretto. Due up here for Loretto in the bottom of the second. Six, seven, eight, Jade Nearin, Jackson Tragula, and Raleigh Ellis. Back on for a second inning of work is Nathan Reed. Through one has given up a hit, no runs, a walk, a strikeout through 21 pitches. Hey, Arlington came out here looking for a matchup, and I get we've only played in, uh, you know, one inning and a half, but it looks like it's going to be a good game. Yeah, this especially pitching-wise, and both teams have gotten out of jams in both innings and uh, each side pitching-wise. So Reed got out of a 2-1. Was it 2-1, one out, second and third situation? Mm -hmm. Aaron here for his first to bat here against the big right-hander. Jaden got a home run last week against uh, in the Tuesday game at Lewis County. Yeah, that's right, down the left field line. Mm -hmm. First pitch from Reed. And that one misses for ball one. And if anybody remembers how close that game was, that home run came in big there at the end. Yeah, had a, bit, had a decent lead, and uh, the Panthers doing what they do, fight hard and made it very interesting down the stretch. It's the 1-0. One, -oh. one is popped up, and that won't go out of play for strike one. And as everyone in Loretto knows, as long as Lewis County's been in their district the past couple of years, you go play them, it, it's going to be tough in any sport. Everybody yeah. knows what they do in football. Basketball, they're, they're going to be tough. Had a little bit of a down year this year. And, and then, you know, on the mound, they're always going to be a tough team to play. To really. That McDonald is the real deal. We've seen him the last couple of years. And even, you know, the guys that they bring in, mm -hmm. you know, the Fletch Kelseys of the world, pretty good pitchers as well. They made an appearance in a, a top ten ranking mm -hmm. for the for the Class A for the Tennessean. That pitch breaking ball misses in for ball two. Yeah. And then they had a nice little top ten matchup here, and Carter Daniel had a heck of a performance that was night. Fifteen strikeouts? I, I believe. Fifteen or sixteen. I mean that that is insane when you only play a seven inning yeah. game. Two one breaking ball, and that one is in there. Evens up the count at two balls and two strikes. And I believe he only gave up one or two hits as well. One hitter. Yeah, yeah it wasn't he? I think he had a walk and a single in the left, if I remember right. Swung on a miss for strike three, and that's the first out of the inning. Strikeout number two for Reed. He's going to bring up the center fielder in Jackson Dragula. Talk about a guy that's had some clutch hits, especially with district play rolling around. Jackson's been able to make a lot of things happen for the guys in white. Yeah, J Jackson, I mean, that, that, that kid's just a worker. I mean, we, we see him in football. You know, he had, you know, that big pick six in that last game of the season against Mount Pleasant, and he comes out uh, on the diamond and just goes to work. First pitch, that one's in there for strike one. Ooh, that game, that football game against Mount Pleasant Ooh. is. It, I still it, go back and yeah, watch it. I do, I do sometimes as well. The changeup is swung on a miss for strike two. I was calling a game at Cheatham County with Lawrence County. They had a running clock because mm -hmm. they won big. Well, uh, and by the time I had wrapped everything up and got in my car, the second half was starting of that Loretta game. You had about 200 points, it feels like. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Eddie were up there on that roof at Mount Pleasant calling mm -hmm. that game, and, and Kevin tapped, us, tapped me on the shoulder and pointed at the screen and had added it all up. We had about 1,700 live viewers mm -hmm. at one point. I mean, that's, that, that's the population yeah. of Loretto. I mean, that is, that's crazy. Here's a 1-2, and Tragula sends that one over the third. Takes a weird hop. McKay makes a play, throws over to first in time, and that's the second out of the inning. Two gone here in the bottom of the second. Brings up the catcher in Raleigh Ellis. Getting the start. Gets a chance to hit here tonight. Seen him at first, seen him behind the plate. And gets a Played chance. some to, second base too. Yeah, some second base. Gets a chance to put the bat in his hands here tonight. You got Green Day as a walk-up song. I mean, that's. We, we've got some, some Beastie yeah. Boys, Metallica, and Green Day. I, I mean, know. some di diverse music taste. I'll give it to them. First pitch here from this one is sky down the left field line. 
He hit it well, but unfortunately hit it foul for strike one. Let's say hit that about 50, 60 feet to the right, and we're fishing that yeah. one out of the cornfield. David Weathers having a nice, fun conversation there with the third baseman in McKay. He's a big leaguer. He knows yeah. how to talk with the best mm -hmm. of them. Oh, one here from Reed. You Ooh. saw, you knew that one was yeah. coming after that. That one's in there for strike two. I went to the count here to Ellis. And, and that's tough with playing facing a pitcher with such good velocity. You time up that fastball, get ready for a curve or a slider, and you're, and you're not going to be able to wait on that. Ellis, though, pokes this one in the left. The left fielder out there, he makes the catch, and that one will end the inning. Three up, three down for the Mustangs in the bottom of the second. No scores. We go to the top of the third. That's next on the Exports Network. Financial advisor Scott Beasley knows time spent with family is everything. As a founder of Beasley Wealth Management, his mission is to give clients the freedom to enjoy time with family without the burden of financial concerns. A local of Lawrenceburg, Scott deeply values building relationships with clients, ensuring they make informed decisions concerning asset management, tax planning, and retirement planning. Offering a free initial consultation, Beasley Wealth Management helps clients pursue their aspirations with confidence. If there ever was such a thing as a company that could do almost anything, well, Tenneke Properties is it. These guys know how to completely transform your existing home into something new or just do it room by room. Need a new bathroom or kitchen? What about a fresh coat of paint? Even a new floor? Looking for dirt work? Tenneke has you covered. Oh, and you can even rent a dumpster from them too. That's Tenneke Properties. Visit Tenneke.com or phone 931-244-444. 4602. Back here, Gary Landfills. We go to the top of the third. No score here between Arlington and Loretta. Top of the order, due up here for the Tigers, Peeler, Hibbard, and Pitts. Mason Tibwell on for his third inning of work through two. No hits, no runs, a walk, four strikeouts, and a hit by pitch here through 44 pitches. So Tibwell back here on the mound, going to try to shut down the Tiger lineup once again. This has been a very tough team here, the class... According to Coach T, second-ranked team in Class 4A in Arlington. A lot of big bats. A lot of guys who can certainly swing it. I mean, you could play a bottom a, a bottom quarter team in, in 4A and still get a good matchup. So the fact that the Mustangs through two innings have hung with Arlington is, is really telling how, how good this program's been. Peeler to lead things off. Struck out looking in his first at bat in the first inning. First pitch here from Tibwell. Breaking ball. So that was a little low. Yeah. Outside. Ball one. Now Clint Seymour is to blame for the <laughs> <laughs> Just can never find somebody. We'll have to meet with the teams before That's the game. Right, Tell them yeah. where they can't stand. That's right. Or you need to bring a crane <laughs> and put the <laughs> camera up there. Here's the one up. This is low and away for ball two. That's why, you know, in the big league parks and the new college parks and my league parks, they have built-in mm -hmm. camera wells in there in center field. 2-0. That is a foul ball back for strike one. Some of them are a bit higher than others. This one's low because we keep it on the fence. Yeah. So yeah. Low in the wind. Yeah. But, hey, I mean, this is, this is giving you almost a college game type of yeah. view at a high school game. So, I mean, heck of a job by our producer. Yeah. Will Pettis, the man, the myth, the legend. Next pitch on the outside corner for strike two. He's also begging for somebody to hit. <laughs> Same with the one on top of the Arlington yeah. dugout. Tibwell shakes off Ellis a couple times. And the two, yep, and looks like Peeler called time there. Comes the 2-2 two -two. in the dirt. A good block by Ellis. Count goes full here. Three balls and two strikes. A beautiful evening. Wind looks like it's pretty much died down. 
judging by the flag out here in left field. Three one. And now he says three two. Okay, now it's full count. It's a full count offering. Ground ball here to Laxon at second. Stays with it, throws over to first in time, and that will be the first down of the inning. One gone here in the top of the third. I'm going to bring up Jackson Hibbert. Hit by a pitch in his first at bat and was left on base there in the first inning. Poor Lucas going to have to ice up that chest. <laughs> yeah, he's it's the second to... one he's, yeah. he's taken. He also had a diving play. No, or that was the first game. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm giving my <laughs> Get your teams mixed they, up. They both wore white jerseys. Um, I know one's blue and one's black, but this one is hit hard down the right field line. Springer making the catch. Okay. Good running catch by Kaysen Springer and right, and that's the second out of the inning. Was a, the, the, the good jump is the reason he made that. If, it, if his jump was slightly off, I mean, that, that's getting down. And I mean, he, he literally it looked like he read it the moment it touched the bat. And good job by Kaysen Wright. Two gone. Now brings up Jack Picks, the first baseman, 0 for 1, but they ground out the Laxon. His first to bat in the first inning. Yeah, it's good for Mason to get a quick out, too, especially at the top half of the order. First pitch here to Pitts. Breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike one. And see, that's what I like about watching when a pitcher goes through the order the second time. You know, it's going to be fastball heavy the first time. Second time, you're going to see a lot more breaking stuff and see if they can time it up. Comes the 0 1. Swung on a miss with the breaking ball for strike two. Mason, a three sports star here for the Mustangs. Going to be the starting quarterback in football. He was kind of thrust in that position last year due to an injury, and then they. Point guard, so to pretty, speak. Shooting Ball guard, point guard. He did practically everything for the basketball team. Fastball misses away here for ball one. Now he's the two, number two starter in baseball and the leadoff hitter, shortstop. I mean, baseman, yeah. Center fielder, wherever you want to put him. So one, two. Fouled away into the softball field and keeping the count of one ball and two strikes. Yeah, big man on campus, and he's just a sophomore. I mean, that, that's incredible. Yeah. Seen him touch 88, 89 a couple times here on the gun so far. And trains right. He's, he's only going to be hitting mid 90s before you know it. Fouled away again here by uh, Pitts. You know, the good thing for Mason, I mean, the, the good fastball's in his blood, so. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. You know, he's got a relative that <laughs> might end up in the big leagues this year. What's well, the Mets? So, you know, they need somebody to pitch for him. That breaking ball, what a pick there by Raleigh. Evens up the count of two balls and two strikes. You know, we're hoping the best for Blade. Obviously, Ryan's with the big league club here. We hope Mason, we hope to see him at City Field. So 2-2. Two -two. Mason, that Blade, I mean, that one is in there for strike three. And that one will end the inning. Three up, three down. For the Tigers here in the uh, top of the third inning, no scores. We go to the bottom half next on the Exports Network. Jack Davis Insurance, located at 201 West Gaines Street in Lawrenceburg, has you covered through all of life's obstacles. Facing those challenges is easier together. That's why Jack Davis specializes in group insurance. Cover the most valuable aspect of your business, your employees, with coverage for life, accident, cancer, critical illness, short-term disability, dental, and vision. Jack Davis can customize plans for every need. Serving Lawrence and surrounding counties since 1987. Contact Jack Davis Insurance today at Back at Gary Lamb Fields, we go to the bottom of the third. No score here between Arlington and Loretto. Due up here for the Mustangs, 9-1-2 with Grant Fisher, third baseman to lead things off. Nathan Reed here for the Tigers on for his third inning of work. Through two has given up a hit, no runs, a walk, two strikeouts, and sitting at 33 pitches. So Michael so far are starting pitchers here through five innings have combined for 
two walks, a hit by pitch, and one hit. I mean, we knew we were going to get some good stuff. I mean, this is almost, you know, might be better than we expected. Yeah, this, Mason has done an incredible job. So has Reed. Reed got out of a huge jam there in the bottom of the first inning. Kind of an interesting stance from Reed. First pitch, and Fisher tries to jump on the fastball, but sends it down the left field line foul for strike one. He's almost got that uh, reliever closer yeah. kind of rhythm going to him. I mean, and, and, and those guys by design are made to, you know, you don't want them to get hit off, and, and we have not hit Reed very well tonight. And this one is foul back for strike two, and some of it's a, a rhythm thing. It's, a, you know, kind of their – everyone's got their own little twitch that they, they try to get themselves into, and maybe that's what he does. And sometimes he might – Rock back once and throw it, or twice or three times. You got so a little then, Johnny Cueto going. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can throw a hitter off and doing things that he's doing. Here's the 0-2. Fastball misses high and away for ball one. Because yeah, AJ, you notice when he comes set that front foot, it kind of starts stepping and stepping, yeah. and you, know, you, you don't, you really mm -hmm. don't know when that pitch is coming. As a hitter, you try to time it up the best that you can. Here's a one-two. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the first out of the inning. Strikeout number three for Reed brings us to the top of the order with Mason Tibwell. Has a lone hit of the game for either side, an infield single to lead things off in the bottom of the first as he faces off with Reed for the second time. Not only is Tibwell getting it done on the mound, he was 90 feet, or his courtesy runner was 90 feet away from scoring the first run. And, you know, if it wasn't for Arlington having a, a wall, stone wall there yeah. behind the dish, I mean, two runs could have scored. There were a couple uh -huh. pitches that almost got away. A lot of room up the middle there with the infield playing where they are. First pitch here. This is a ground ball down the third baseline and foul for strike one. You know, Mason really came on late in the season last year with his bat, and it's good to see him at the top of the order again this year. And, and he's had a good start. Here's the 0-1. That misses low for ball one. Mason's one of those leadoff hitters with pop in his bat as well. Yeah, he's had, he had a one, I believe it was the Marshall County game very early in the season mm -hmm. that was about two feet shy from, from smacking off the short scoreboard. Here's a 1-1. In the dirt for ball two. Those are some good takes. We've seen some of those low mm -hmm. pitches called, called strikes. and a Good job by Mason laying off. Especially with a sharp breaking ball like that. So looking at the, the charter bus Arlington brought to, to Loretto. It's nice. Summertown looking like they're trying to hop on, board <laughs> hop there on it. Shot. Here's a two one. A real it's, sneaky. They can just yeah. they're just they're just and Grace and them are out there going, hmm, do they think they'll no, they'll notice? <laughs> How do we get one of these in Summertown? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, or Loretto. We I mean, got we got a good first class charter in town. This hey, has it, gotten good stuff, and I'm not saying that because they're a sponsor, but they do. No, they, they got nice stuff. Yeah. Here's a two two, ground ball here to McKay at third, bullet over to first, is in time, and that is the second out of the inning. Man, that got over there in a hurry. A really fast hurry. Yeah, you, you're it. talking about him closing. I mean, that that got across the mount, uh, across the diamond, 88 to 90. <laughs> It's going to bring up Kaysen Springer here, the right fielder. Flew out to right in his first at bat in the first inning. Two gone. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third. No score here between these two. First pitch from Reed. Springer swings and misses for strike one. Yeah, this is the, you know, Springer's a sophomore. This is his first year he's really been an everyday starter in the lineup. You like to see him coming out and being aggressive, and he, he has been, if not the top, is pretty close to the top of the Mustangs in on-base percentage. Here's the 1 Swing and a miss for strike two. Looks like he's trying to hit the, the Gary yeah. Lamb field sign out there no in right, right That's center. A huge cut. Trying to hit it over the Gary Lamb field sign. In the 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Three up, three down from the Mustangs in the bottom of the third. No scores. We are the top of the fourth. That's next on the Exports Network. 
At Smith Tax and Business Service, we offer many services. Along with personal income tax prep, we also offer tax preparation for corporations and partnerships. If you're a small business and looking for some extra help, give us a shout and we'll get you fixed up. Call Mary Beth Smith, Marion Matthews, Brooklyn Bates, or Michelle Staggs to find out how we can help you. Located at 208 Pulaski Street, phone 931-244-6633. Oliver Wellness and Massage, located in Pulaski, Tennessee, is your premier spa for massage therapy, salt therapy, IV therapy, tanning, and much more. Stay relaxed, look your best, and feel good at Oliver Wellness, located at 1187 West College Street, Pulaski, Tennessee, or contact Haley at 931-309-0462 or schedule your appointment online at 931massage.com. Welcome back here to Gary Landfills. We go to the top of the fourth. No score here between Loretto and Arlington. Do up four. Sorry, I, my app threw me off here. <laughs> Do up here for Arlington is Jack, excuse me, Carter McKay, the third baseman, 0 for 1 with a strikeout so far in the game. Mason Tibble on for his third inning of work. No hits, no runs, a walk, a hit by pitch, and five strikeouts through 58 pitches. Another little score update, bottom of the fifth, Tennessee leading LSU 6-1 to one now. First pitch there, missed for ball one. Hey man, can we talk about how big this kid is up to bat? Because Raleigh Ellis looks like a child next to him, and Raleigh is not a small person. And this guy hit a rocket for a double over, <laughs> over the center fielder's head in the first inning. He's got that middle linebacker body. Here's a 1-0. Hit oh high in the air goodness. to deep right field, and see you later. <laughs> I mean, Kaysen just turned around. He didn't even start walking. A solo shot there by Carter McKay, a no-doubter in the right, and the Tigers lead it one to nothing. I feel like we kind of manifested that one. Yeah. Let's, let's get stat cast on that one. <laughs> I would bound to say that's one that's either one of the Memphis or Arkansas State commits. I, I, I would have to agree with you because, I mean, he, 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 heard the, he heard the sound off the bat and just flipped it. Yeah, Kaysen took two steps and knew that one was out of here. <laughs> wow. I mean, Michael, you've seen a lot of games here. Is that one of the furthest balls you've seen hit? Pretty close. We played uh, Russellville here. I believe it was my senior year of high school, freshman year of college one, and they had a kid hit one over the scoreboard in left field. Wow. And that, that's the furthest I've ever seen a ball hit. But that, that one's a close second. That was the first hit of the game here in the first next pitch by Tibwell here to Britt Fowler. He's on the outside corner for strike one. He reached via an error in the second inning. Well, I was talking to some of the kids. I was like, listen, you're either going to get a ground ball or a home run when you're playing a big school like this. I mean. Next one is fouled away for strike two. And Mason's done a good job getting some ground balls, but. Ooh, that one a, was a little bit of the opposite. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a ballpark that wouldn't have gone out of. Maybe, uh, no, that would have gone out at Fenway at that, that yeah, big Yeah, uh, the, the big pesky loop. pole. Yeah. I mean, right, straight right, and then Wrigley's pretty deep, but. Yeah, that would have gone out. That would that might have gone off the scoreboard. <laughs> I mean, that was yeah. in the high 300s yeah. in, the, in the feet if it was not 400. One and two the count here to Fowler. The next pitch from Tibwell. Breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike three. And the first out of the inning. Strikeout number six for Mason. Now brings up Peyton Goolsby, the right fielder. Walked in his first at bat in the second inning. And Zach Curtis will come out and take Mason out of the game as he is now at 64 pitches. Hey, way to, uh, way to bounce back after giving up yeah. a, a moonshot to go you know, three, four pitches to the next kid, strike him out looking, so. We will have a pitching change, and while that goes down, we will take a break here on the X Sports Network.
The Raptor Series from Hustler Turf. A premium line of residential mowers designed with a wide stance for operator comfort. A one-piece 11-gauge steel frame and welded steel deck for added durability. Finished off with premium Kawasaki V-Twin power. We are Hustler Turf. And this is Hustler Country. Patient care at its finest is found at Tennessee Valley Family Care. From primary to infant care, physicals, women's health, allergies, diabetes management, plus on-site labs and ultrasounds, let practitioners Liz Phillips, Kathy Cohen, and Stephanie Tucker care for your health and your entire family's health. Let Tennessee Valley Family Care help you reach your health care goals. Make your property rock and roll with services from GNS Excavating, specializing in white sand, compost, mulch, topsoil, landscape gravel, and still landscape edges. Dylan Thompson, new pitcher in the game for Loretta, as Grant Fisher will go from third to second. Mason Tidwell will go from pitching to third. So Tidwell went through three and a third innings. One hit, one run, one walk, a hit by pitch, six strikeouts, and finished right at the deadline at 64 pitches. And Thompson, another three-sport athlete, wide receiver on the football team, big man on, on the basketball team, and then a, a good arm and an outfielder for the, for the Mustangs baseball team. The first pitch is on the outside corner for strike one. Nobody on, one out. Lone difference here is a McKay homer to right field. So one same spot and in there for strike two hey thompson is not afraid to to really hammer the strike zone i've, I've seen him in a couple appearances this year and, and that kid pumps it in the strike zone now sometimes it it can result in a bunch of hits but you know more times than not it's it, it's a good fastball that's it's hard to touch schools be calls time right before thompson went in his windup a couple times that's happened tonight mm -hmm. here's the o2 this one is fouled out of play down the left field line. The count will stay where it is. And no balls and two strikes. Late on that fastball right there. And that's three straight. Mm -hmm. he's, he's thrown here in this game. Let's see if he mixes it up right here. The 0 2. That one misses high and away for ball one. And it looks like someone from Arlington tracked down that home run ball. I guess they went swimming in the cornfield for that one. <laughs> it's a one-two. On the outside corner for strike three, and that is the second out of the inning. His first strikeout of the game. Now going to bring up Tucker Bearden. Yeah, you love to see it when your 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 first reliever out of the bullpen, you know, picks up right where your starter left off. You know, Tidwell ends with a strikeout. Thompson starts with a strikeout. Hopefully, we can, you know, keep Arlington at bay. Brings up Tucker Bearden here, the catcher. And a sack bunt in the second inning. Pitch here from Thompson. This is high and in for ball one. Here's a one up. And that one's going to hit him in the back. Hit a couple of guys tonight yeah. now. That one's like yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, hey, Arlington, uh, not going to head home unscathed, you know, physically. <laughs> we have some bruises to rub in the morning. Got a pinch runner. And Look at the <coughs> number 25 here. That is Will Turner. 
Will Turner over there at first base. Came in for the catcher in Bearden. Williams, the center fielder, struck out swinging his lone bat in the second, and that one hits him in the head. So back-to-back -back hit by pitches here. Now two on, two gone in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that is why we wear helmets. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> while they made that rule change in the 19-teens or 20s. <laughs> Went from the leather caps. Yeah, or just hats yeah, just, in just general. Hat. <clears throat> Over 80 miles an hour. That uh, All I saw was an eight. I didn't see the next number, but. Any of that shit I heard. I'm, I'm surprised that he's still up and, and was able to walk to first. Going to bring up Reed Meher. He struck out looking. He is alone to bat in the second inning. That one ended the second inning. Up here again, 2-1, two, 2 gone. First pitch from Thompson. That one is fouled down the right field line for strike one. Arlington, a little two-out rally coming yeah. right here. They, I mean, they didn't do much to get it, just yeah. stand up there and hit, get hit. But, you know, runner in scoring position with two outs, trying to extend this lead. Yeah. Sometimes it's just about taking advantage of what the other team gives you. Meharry aggressive there after back-to-back -back hit by pitches on two straight pitches, and that one misses high and in for ball one. Thompson better hope that they don't pull a, a ground ball because that's, that's easily in the left field. Seymour and, and Tibble have a – Country mile between them. Here's a 1 1. This is high and in for ball two. Two and one the count here to Meharry. Two one. And he's going to square around the butt. Thompson bare hand fields, throws over to first. Oh, wow. And in time, a great pick by Carter Daniel over at first, and that one will end the inning. Arlington strikes first with a McKay solo homer to right. They lead it one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth, next on the Exports Network. Here at Heritage Automotive, experience the difference with our great sales department, service department, and parts department. Now offering up to $10,000 off on all Chevy and GMC model 1500s. And we have over 30 lenders with some of the best rates in the market. Hi, it's Tad with Heritage Automotive. We want you to know when it comes to your vehicle, you deserve help, not hassle. With our 30 plus years of experience of being your local dealership, we're here to serve you. So whether it's routine maintenance, mechanical repairs, collision repairs, we're here to help. So give us a call today to schedule your service. Heritage Automotive, expect more, experience the difference. Got a dent, a ding, a scratch, or a bent fender? Major or minor, Car Country Collision Center in Leoma can fix you up. Car Country works with all insurance carriers, gives free estimates, can work on foreign and domestic vehicles, and has experience you can trust. They've been in business since 1990. Unfortunately, accidents happen, but you can get your car back on the road with as little hassle as possible with the help of Car Country. Call 931-852-4708 or stop by at 2567 Highway 43 South in Leoma. Welcome back here to Gary Landfills. We go to the bottom of the fourth here. Arlington leading Loretto one to nothing. Heart of the order due up for the Mustangs. Three, four, and five with Seymour, Daniel, and Moore. Nathan Reed out for his fourth inning of work through three. No runs, a hit, a walk, four strikeouts through 45 pitches. Seymour who walked in his first at bat in the bottom of the first. Second A.B. here against Reed. First pitch. This is high for ball one. And, hey, Arlington, you know, picked up the first run of the game, top half of the inning. Mustangs, you would not rather have a, another spot in the lineup up, you know, than, than, than three, four, five trying to battle back. This is the 1-0. And missed for ball two. And, you know, talking about that one walk, uh, A.J. Clint Seymour was the recipient of that base on balls. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see if he can you – know, it's, it's looking good right now. The two base runners in the game, a Tibwell single and a Seymour walk. Here's a 2-0. In there for strike one. Clint not happy about that one. No. And hearing some of the groans from the 
home standing fans in black. But I mean, we've seen it outside, inside, both ways. So I mean, yeah. that strike zone is going to be wide. Duality of man yeah. right there. You got somebody standing in Is short. Is that Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a 2-1 breaking ball. And that's just ball three, Clint. <laughs> or is it ball four? Well, he's going to take first either way. I guess ball four. Did I miss one? Did it? Somebody missed one. Uh, yeah. Is he caught? Let's see what we got here. Because he called that one a straight. Yeah, it's not a Loretto baseball game if yeah. something weird doesn't happen. So here's the weird yeah. of the night. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll make him come back. Yeah. I mean, everyone up here can agree yeah. it was 3 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not much hey, argument there. I don't there. blame Clint, you know. No, if, if, hey. no, if nobody's paying attention, drop the bat and walked first. As they say in wrestling, he sold it. And he sold it really well right there. Now, Zach Curtis also out as well. Well, both coaches are going to get there. Yeah. If one coach is going to go talk to the umpire, yeah. the other one has to. Right, wrong, or in between. Yep. It's kind of what happens. You know, one comes out. The other one's got to come out and get his understanding as well. That's a 3-1 count. Still a hitter's count here for Clint. But, you know, when, when that tends to happen, that strike zone seemingly gets a lot yeah. bigger. So, Seymour's really going to have to battle right here to try to get on base. And the 3 1. And that one is ball four. And actually, that ball gets away. Clint's going to take off quickly to first, makes the turn, but that's as far as he'll go. So the leadoff runner ahead here, leadoff batter for the Mustangs, now brings up Carter Daniel, the first baseman, grounded out the short in his first at bat in the first inning. He's able to move the runners in the scoring position. Middle infield, second base is playing a double play depth. Shortstop's playing there in the hole. And outfield, left fielder's kind of protecting the line down the left field line. Right fielder looks a little deeper than the left fielder, but yeah, that, that may just be where, where we're standing. No, he, he looks like he's deeper. First pitch, a breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike one. And, and maybe they, they watched some film, you know, late last season, Carter did have that uh, – that opposite field home run in the district tournament, I believe it was against Summertown or Lewis County one, I'm not sure. It may have been against Giles, actually. Yeah. I, think, I think it was against Giles. Seymour takes Ooh. off as Carter fouls that one away for strike one. Seymour got a good jump on him, too. So we got Carter's dad up here. It was Summertown. Summertown, okay, yeah. yeah. His dad wouldn't remember. Hey, guy, got, got, got a – yeah. You know, rally for your kids. That's and, and it's why, it's why we got to talk to our sources. <laughs> even hey, if we they, got them up here. Even if they are 10 feet away, we got to <laughs> talk to our sources. 0-2 oh, the count here to Daniel. This is away with the fastball for ball one. That was a brave take right there. Mm -hmm. Because we, we haven't seen this pitcher for Arlington waste many pitches at all. To, so to take an 0-2 like that, I mean, it, it's, it's brave. One and two, the count here to Daniel. Seymour extending his lead bit, a bit at first, and he'll check on him. One thing when you're a pitcher that does what Reed does, if you can time it right, it's almost an automatic stolen base every time, but you got to have the right set of wheels. Say we saw it a couple of plays ago. Seymour was two-thirds of the way there. Yeah. And he did it there again, and Daniel Ooh. fouls that one back, keeping the count at one ball and two strikes. Yeah, Mustang's trying to get that hit and run going. Because, you know, with, yeah. the, with the speed Seymour's got it, you know, a good hit and run. You know, Carter yeah. was trying to hit it there mm -hmm. to the right side. If that gets through. That, that's a, a run almost. Yeah. If not, he's – Easily at third. Yeah. Here's a one two. This is high and in. A pick off a tip. Doesn't get him at first count. Evens up here. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah. Almost some ball, uh, some softball level of chirping coming from the mm -hmm. from the from the yeah. dugouts tonight. Yeah, it's not as organized. No, it definitely not. And it doesn't rhyme either. Yeah. 
Do you think you can get a group of 14 to 17 year old boys to be organized, other than wearing the same uniform? No. You were out of luck. Sometimes they don't even do that. <laughs> And that does look like Santa. <laughs> Here's a 2-2. Breaking ball on the dirt. And count goes full here. Three balls and two strikes. Got a senior battling right here. Yeah. It's a really good battle here. Read now of 56 pitches through three-plus innings. You never know when Santa's going to show up, Will. I got, you know, <laughs> I got to keep that belief in my son for as long as it, we can. Ooh. Clint was leaning Ooh. there towards yeah. second, and he got back just in the nick of time. A really good pick off a tip there by Reed. My son shaded me earlier today. Ooh. I, I tried to play his game against him and he told me no no daddy my game not yours <laughs> full count offering and another foul ball here by Daniel sends it into the Arlington bullpen and then he shut the door on me and said bye bye mm. then felt guilty five seconds later and gave <laughs> me a hug gotta love two year olds and Carter approaching double saying double digit pitches here this AB yeah, that was pitch number seven of the at bat Pitch number eight. This is high and away, and he works the walk. What a battle right there. He was 0-2 <clears throat> for a couple of pitches and then somehow battled back. So, you know, two on, nobody out. Miles Moore up to bat. Anything can happen. Moore 0 for 1 with a strikeout looking in the first inning. That pitch didn't miss by much. Home plate umpire says it was a bit high. So, we got two on, nobody out. Big situation here for Miles Moore. So we got the – Replay here. Yep, hair I high. I would say that was slightly yeah. above the yeah. belt. So hair we'll high. And he's, you know, hey, he's he calls them. He, it's consistent. Yeah, he's consistent when, with the high strikes. He's not a high strike umpire. He's a low strike umpire, and we've seen that consistently tonight. And, and that tends to, you know, have quicker games, a bunch of ground balls. <coughs> so maybe he's just a little cold yeah. there behind home plate. Well, we know the field umpire is <laughs> freezing. <laughs> I don't think he's moved. He cannot wait till May gets here, just or just some sort of warmth. And then it goes from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. Moore's bun attempt, and that one's missed for strike one. You got the first baseman playing about a step or two in on the grass. The second baseman is almost like he's cheating towards first base. Third baseman even with the back. Second base pretty much almost at double play depth. It's going to be kind of tough for first baseman to come in and then turn and make that throw back yeah. to first. So, interesting. Right Zero here. one. Breaking ball. Misses away for ball one. And, again, this home plate umpire, if you're trying to lay down a bunt and you pull back, nine times out of ten it's going to be called a ball. Back to back breaking balls. He's thrown them here as Miles is squared around. He's a one, and it's a uh -oh. pickoff attempt. And didn't get him. I'd say, let's, let's check instant replay here, yeah. Will. <laughs> I don't know if he ever put the tag I, I on him. I don't think he did. It, it, was it almost looked like he was surprised by it a bit, but let's see the replay here. Would have had him, but yeah, I don't think he yeah. tagged him until Quint got his foot yeah. on the bag. And now. We'll have a quick conversation here. Yeah. I mean, it's not college baseball. You can't yeah. review it. Had now, we, we, we've seen referees and umpires yeah. change calls before, but I don't think this one is. It's head coach Jonathan McCoy, and I believe he just got a warning there. Yeah, yeah, Clint was, yeah and Clint was on the bag before the tag was ever applied. Yeah, it was close, but, uh, you know, Clint certainly looked like he got there just in the nick of time. It was a good pickoff, though. Yeah. you got to give him credit for it. He's, I mean, th this pitcher's got Clint leaning twice now. Once on first, once on second. So, you know. Especially in this situation. Yeah. You, know, it, you can catch anyone off guard just like that. You know, you're, I mean, you're, you're going to see Carter and Clint both dancing here, trying to keep the, the infield distracted while Miles tries to advance some runners. 
It's a 1-1. Miles squares around the butt and mm. fouls that one away. And the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Lucky that one didn't sneak down the third baseline. Yeah. That one was hot enough. That was a – had a double play written all over it. And Phil will go back to its normal positions. Middle infield, double play. And the – Now, call me crazy, A.J. Yeah. The Mustangs have bunted with two strikes before yeah. this year. He's, I know it's not a popular opinion, yeah. but – He's seen three straight breaking balls. One, two. Fastball swung on a miss for strike three, and that's the first out in the inning. Strikeout number five of the game here for Reed. Brings up the designated hitter in Jaden Aaron. Struck out, swinging his first at bat in the second inning, his second at bat here against Reed. Reed's starting to pitch with a little swagger here. As you've seen, he's yeah. going through the order the second, third time. You know, he, He's starting to pitch with a little yeah. more confidence. So. Yeah, you see, you've seen how excited he gets when he ends the inning. And with runners on like this, I mean, he's liable to explode. <laughs> Corner infield playing even with the bags here. First baseman a step on the grass. Reed picks his foot up and then steps off the rubber. If the pickoff attempt happens, it's going to happen to the second baseman. He's playing pretty close to the bag. First pitch. Swung on a miss on the breaking ball for strike one. And he's had these, uh, Reed has had these younger Mustangs batters looking a little lost because, you know, if this is not their first or second year playing, you know, they haven't seen Velo like this. Yeah. The 1-0, -oh, that one's going to get in the dirt. Throw over to second. Now we're going to have a rundown situation. They tag him out. Here's the throw home, and he's going to score. Maybe that was the weird for the night. Yeah. <laughs> hey, got a guy out at second, and he eventually scores. How so, about that? What about that? Now the – I don't know what McCoy's coming out to talk about. So that ties the game up here at one. That was heads up by yeah. two seniors there, Carter and, and Clint. You know, Carter to get caught in that little rundown and Clint had the time to get home. You know, it was lucky that throw was off because uh, it, it looked like if, if throw was online, that was going to be a close play. So each team getting a run here in the fourth inning. Now two gone here in the bottom of the fourth, a 1-0 count or 0-1 count. This pitch here. That one is in there. I believe that's strike two. Not sure. One and two, actually. Next pitch here from Reed. Swung on a miss for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Mustangs tie things up here in the bottom of the fourth one alls. We go to the top of the fifth. That's next on the Exports Network. Back here at Gary Lamb Field here, all knotted up at one as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. We apologize for yeah. some tec technical difficulties. Here's the instant replay. Here's how Loretto tied it up here with a double still attempt. 
Runner got taken out at second base. Then Clint Seymour wisely came on home while they tagged him out at second. So a double steal here, and Loretto has tied the game up at one apiece. Here in the top of the fifth now, top of the order, due up for the Tigers, Parker Peeler, followed by Hibbard and Pitts. Peeler's 0 for 2 with a strikeout, looking to ground out the second, the first and third. First pitcher from Dylan Thompson. Ground ball over to Tibwell at third. His throw over to first, and a great job by Carter Daniel. Make the catch and the tag here for the first out in the inning. And that was big for Thompson. One pitch, one out, top of the order. I mean, you know, they don't put you at the top of the order for no reason, so these are by far Arlington's best batters. If Thompson can take them down confidently, you know, it's going to get interesting here late. A great job there by Carter to make the play. One gone after one pitch. Next pitch here to Hibbard is in there for strike one. Hibbard's 0 for 1, hit by a pitch in the first and flew out to right in the third. The 0 1, this one is fouled away onto the softball field for strike two. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, our hot spot just decided, you know what, I'm done for the day. Hey, he, he got some work in. Yeah. This is a ground ball up the middle. Seymour makes the play, throws over to first in time. It's the second out of the inning. Two gone after back-to-back -back ground balls here in the top of the fifth. And some good scouting there by the Mustangs because Seymour was playing right up the middle, got a great jump and makes the second out of the inning. Yeah, most hits like that are base hit. You know, Clint. You see, you see him behind the dish a lot. You, you don't think of catchers as much as being athletes, but nowadays everybody's an athlete. And Clint, good job to eat that one up and, and fire it over to first for the second out. Jack Pitts due up 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout in the first and third. First pitch here from Thompson. Foul back for strike one. Yeah, gone are the days of the uh, big blocks <laughs> behind home plate. They, they were kind of, we were starting to get away from that when I was – coming through the high school and college ranks and athletes everywhere, man. Another thing I've noticed that's sort of coming into style is the, the pink accessories. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those. There's a ground ball here to Tibwell at first and three straight ground balls, three straight outs, and that one ends the inning. Three up, three down for the Tigers in the top of the fifth, all knotted up at one. Let's go to the bottom half of the inning next on the Exports Network. Flooring sets the time throughout your home. For flooring that makes the right first impression, start by choosing us, Floored by Justin. A one-stop flooring destination. Our new location stands alone for unequaled customer service and selection. Owner Justin Story's mastery of custom hardwood inlays means every room can have a custom look. Discover how the right choice of hardwood, laminate, carpet, or tile can set the tone in your home. Contact Floored by Justin today. Swap and Shop Center in Lawrenceburg is your go-to stop to complete your home, business, a combination of both, or really anything you can think of. With one of the region's biggest selection of bedroom furniture, name brand mattresses, recliners, living room and dining room suits, accents for the home or office, quality name brand appliances, and did I mention Swap and Shop services what they sell? This is family owned and operated business at its best. And the best part is, they'll treat you like family too. We got bedroom suits, mattresses, dining room suits, appliances, outdoor equipment, mowers, and more. See us at the Swap and Shop Center. Back here, Gary Landfield, bottom of the fifth. Gate tied to one between Arlington and Loretto. Bottom of the order due up for the Mustangs. 7 8 9. Jackson Tragill to lead things off. Grounded out the third in his first at bat. Nathan Reed on for his fifth inning of work through four. One run off a hit, three walks, six strikeouts, sitting right now at 66 pitches. First pitch here to Tragill. That one misses low and in for ball one. Be big if the Mustangs could put a run up right here. You know, you gave up the, that moonshot to Arlington. You you battle back, you know, even the game back up at one. If you can get a run right here in the in the bottom of the fifth, that can kind of turn the momentum more your way. Base runners have been hard to come by for both sides. That pitch, this is away for ball two. 60, 68, Will. 
It's efficient. Well, yeah, Will with the, the crash has had to uh, play a lot of catch up here as that pitch is fouled away for strike one to make it two balls and one strike. Now 69 pitches. Oh, what? Well, you're giving them too much credit. Well, there you go. <laughs> Will does a great job with this broadcast and has got a – how he keeps up with everything is pretty impressive and all the camera angles, and he's got to deal with Timmy. So there's, there's <laughs> that, is, that is a lot. Here's a 2-1. This is skying in the air to left. Here the shortstop makes the catch, and that will be the first out of the inning. One gone here in the bottom of the fifth. Brings up the catcher in Raleigh Ellis. Flew out to left in his first at bat in the second inning. Actually hit a home run foul <laughs> yeah. the first pitch he saw, but then eventually flew out later. Yeah, we, we could joke and say that was the hardest hit ball of the night, yeah. but uh, yeah. I, again, I don't think that that one from earlier has landed yet. First pitch from Reed, breaking ball in there for strike one. Almost buckled Ellis right there. The breaking ball. The 0-1. Ground ball sent over to Hibbert at short. Throw over to first. Good stretch by Pitts over at first, and that's going to be the second out of the inning. Two gone in the bottom of the fifth. Brings up Grant Fisher, now the second baseman. Fisher struck out swinging in his first at bat in the third inning. Again, another tough tough thing about, you know, for Loretta playing a, a big 4A school like Arlington, if you can get the bat on the ball, you got to get it through their defense. I mean, their infield – you know, other than Mason's little infield single to start the night, has been phenomenal. They have uh, one error in 12 innings, yeah. almost 12 innings. So you almost, you almost forget they, they played Summertown earlier in the day. I mean, they're, they're back-to-back games and after a three-hour yeah, car ride. And haven't, haven't missed a step really at all. First pitch there by Fisher is fouled. 0-1 oh, the count with two gone here in the bottom of the fifth. That's what good teams do, AJ. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they come to play. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, right down the road or, or a three-hour bus ride. And they don't beat themselves either. Hey, you don't have to go to Murfreesboro if you want to win a state championship. That's not an easy drive from Memphis. The you know, one, that one misses away for ball one. And I bet there's some guys in the Mustang dugout thinking, dang, why couldn't we get one of those earlier? Yeah, yeah that uh, two want runners on second and third in the first inning and – Probably not, you know, hey, it's – when you look at the left on base numbers. It, yeah, Ooh. for both teams. Mm -hmm. Lawrence County had one of those in the loss to Giles County where they left 10 on base. Mm. So 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss here for strike two and a ball in the dirt. Fisher wishes he had that one back. <laughs> and, again, you know, Fisher's a sophomore. It's his first year really getting – you know, big varsity ABs. It's hard to come out and face a guy like this, really, in your first year starting. And the one-two. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Seven strikeouts now for Reed. It's a one-one game as we go to the top of the six. Next on the Exports Network. You know, Storingly Furniture is not just some huge chain store, but we do have a 144,000 square foot show right here in Leoma, Tennessee. The Story family has worked together in the business for over 50 years now. And a familiar face is here to help you with whatever you need. That's what being a part of the community right here in the Tennessee Valley means. And if you have an issue, we're right here to take care of it. And don't forget free delivery. We invite you to come see us. We're Story and Lee Furniture.
And back here at Gary Landfield, we go to the top of the six, all knotted up at one here between Loretto and Arlington. Four, five, six, do up here for the Tigers. Carter McKay to lead things off has the lone hit, the lone run score with a solo shot the right in the fourth inning. He will face off with Dylan Thompson here for the first time. Mammoth hit at, at that. Yeah, it's uh, that would be gone in 99.9% .9 of the <laughs> ballparks in the world. It's Dylan Thompson's first pitch is low for ball one. Thompson threw an inning and two thirds. No hits, no runs, no walks, a strikeout. Does have a pair of hit by pitches now through 19 pitches. What we got going on here? I got a. Oh, we got a dog. We got a critter on the field. No. Yeah, we got. Is that a dog? Yeah, that is a dog. Oh. The ball dog went out there. No. <laughs> I don't know. Has ball dog ever gotten on the field before? Joke about one strange yeah. thing happening during a Loretta game. We've had about five to nine. Yeah. Now, uh, good job there, Miles Moore, to make sure the gate shuts so another ball doesn't, another dog doesn't make its way out. It's kind of hoping we had like a squirrel or a rabbit or something. That would be some real fun. Okay, skies this one. This one's going to stay in the ballpark. And what a play by Clint Seymour at short. That ball was destined to go and land in the green grass, and Clint Seymour makes the play for the first out of the inning. Now we'll bring up Britt Fowler, the left fielder, 0 for 2, reached via an error in the second, struck out looking in the fourth. Yeah, that one got real close to dropping in that little Bermuda Triangle. But a little ac acrobatic play by your shortstop right there to you know, get a big out. First pitch here to Fowler. This is high and in for ball one. Wonder if a Loretto fan threw the dog out there to get <laughs> get get the batter off. Uh. Yeah, that dog once he got on the field realized I want to get off of the field. <laughs> next, I've made a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> next pitch fouled away for strike one. I've seen that face on my uh, own dog before. Like, yep, that was my bad. <laughs> I realize I shouldn't have done that. I still want treats, but I realize I shouldn't have done that. Here's a one-one. Fouled away for strike two. One and two the count here with one out in the top of the sixth inning. Here comes a one two. Sent in the right field. And that's going to get down for a base hit. And, and there was a big hole right there in right center, so you know, that, that one was going to get down. But a good job by Springer to really jump on that one and keep that one from being extra bases. So one out single by Fowler. Brings up Peyton Goolsby, the right fielder. 0 for 1. Walked in the second. Struck out looking in the fourth. Facing Thompson here for the second. Nope, facing Thompson for the second time. That's right. Still a big hole out there in right center. It's just the second base hit of the game for the Tigers and third overall between the two teams. First pitch, this is high for ball one. So you, you can you can figure with a big school like Arlington coming in here and, and Loretta with their track record, record with pitchers, it was going to be a pitcher's match. Mm. Certainly had that so far. It's been entertaining. And we like we like pitching your stools just like we like high scoring games. Next pitch of that one, going to miss away for ball two. Decent lead by Fowler over at first. And they're going to oh. get, ooh, that one's going to get away. He had him if he, he, if he caught it. Him, yeah. And he will get there off the missed pickoff attempt. That's a tough break right there. Had him just to throw mm -hmm. his a, a hair off. Yeah, good job by the base runner right there. It looked like he caught yeah. a knee or something to the head and still had the wherewithal to get up and get the second. But so. again, foul territory here is 
it, it's pretty large. Yeah. You know, there, there's enough room. It's not Babe Ruth large, but it's, it's pretty large. Thompson now will step off, reset himself. It's a 2-0 count here to Goolsby. It's been a pitch clock violation by this point. Maybe two. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. One on each side. There's a 2 0. Ground ball, squib near the Loretto dugout for strike one. Yeah, I was thinking about that a second ago. If we had a pitch clock, we would be home right now <laughs> in high school. Well, someone, uh, Keegan McCafferty for Summertown, that is, uh, you don't need one for that kid. <laughs> I, I was I, I want a pitch clock for how much time he takes in between pitches, which is like what five seconds. Well, <laughs> as long as it takes to catch the yeah. ball again. The two one that one misses high and away for ball three. I've never seen anyone at any level work that fast. He's got the A B just mapped out in his head completely. He's just yep. go go go. It's like Pac Man at the arcade. The guys who know know waste <laughs> no time getting you a million points. Here's a three one. This is away for ball four. Two on, one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Now I'm going to bring up the catcher and Tucker Bearden. No official at bat. Sack Munt in the second was hit by a pitch in the fourth. As Raleigh Ellis will go out to have a conversation here with Thompson. Pitch count's not too high. Just no. probably calming him down. I mean, like, you know, just kind of settling down. He, he looked good there, you know, almost first time through the order. It's just – some of these guys coming up for the second time, seeing them, you know, a couple of times now, it's made those ABs a little easier. It did give them time to get someone down in the bullpen. Looked like that was Jaden Aaron yeah. going down there. Actually, it might be Hayden Buttram that's warming up. Can't really. T that that does look no, like Buttram. Look at me, my eyes yeah. haven't failed me yet. First pitch, in there for strike one. I saw that number seven. I believe Jaden's going to catch him, but yeah. Saw that number seven going yeah. down there, but yeah. you've been in the in the business a little longer than I have, so I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. give you the heads up right there. Because yeah, your eyes are better than mine, so. <laughs> Legally blind without my contacts. <laughs> Here's the 0 1. Swing and a miss for strike two. And Thompson is right now at 31 pitches, so pitch count is not an issue with Dylan. Really in his first jam that, yeah. he, that he's had since he's been in the game. There's two batters on last inning. He had hit both of them, but there was two outs. Zio 2 Swing and a miss for strike three, and that's a second out in the inning. It's his second strikeout of the game, eighth for Mustang pitching. Brings up St Slade Williams, the center fielder. 0 for 1, strikeout swinging in the, in the second and took a – Fastball to the cranium in the fourth. Really, after that, Dylan's kind of settled in. Previous inning in the fifth, got three up, three down through the heart of the order off three straight ground balls. Man, I mean, sometimes you can't even tell when Thompson's in a jam because he just, you know, I was talking to uh, Coach Nick Moore before the game, talking about that Lewis County game on that Tuesday. Mustangs had, I believe, a 7-3 to three, uh, lead mm -hmm. heading into the bottom of the seventh. It was 7-6, runners on second and third in a 3-0 count, and, and Thompson got out of it. So, I mean, you almost can't tell that that kid's in a jam. First pitch thrown for a strike. Here's the 0-1. In there for strike two. Back-to-back -back fastballs. Yeah, he's got the crowd behind him. He's going to have a little heat under this one. It's going to be that Major League wild thing, Rick Vaughn, just yeah. that 0-2, just heater. Get about the curveball, Ricky. Throw him the, Throw him the heater. <laughs> Want to man manage Cleveland this year? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Here's the 0-2. Fastball swung on and missed for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Tigers strand two in the top of the six. 1-1 one, one game as we go the bottom half in the inning next on the Exports Network. A local law firm respected throughout the state. Generations of clients have turned to Boston, Holt, and Durham since 1948. We assist individuals and businesses with their legal needs, including real estate, property closings, personal injury, employment discrimination, and family law. 
Our clients get the personal attention and convenience of a hometown law firm with the resources and ability to handle any case. Come see us at Boston, Holt, and Durham. Since 1986, Southeast Carriers, Inc. has been a family-owned and operated business in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. We strive to have updated equipment and technology to make our driver's job easier. We offer large company pay and benefits with a small company atmosphere. Are you tired of just being a number when you call your current company? Here you will be known on a first-name basis, and all we ask is for you to give us an opportunity to prove that we are different than most trucking companies. For more information, visit Southeast Carriers. Back here at Gary Landfield, we go to the bottom of the six here, top of the order, due up for the Mustangs, Tipwell, Springer, and Seymour. Reed on for his fifth inning of work, sixth inning of work, excuse me, for the Tigers through five, a run off a hit, three walks, seven strikeouts, now at 76 pitches. Mason one for two in the game as a lone hit for the Mustangs, an infield single, and also grounded out the third in the third. Facing Reed here for the third time in the game. First pitch. This is high for ball one. I get Reed's pitch count isn't high, and there's nobody in the bullpen for Arlington. Look like they might be in the, trying to ride this guy to the end. And the first pitcher of the game of Fowler in the previous mm -hmm. game went six innings. Here's a 1 up breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike one. And Reed showed th this dude's a competitor. I mean, this has been a competitive ball game all six innings so far. And he has stepped up to the challenge on multiple occasions here so far. Here's a 1-1, one, one. breaking ball. Tip back and caught for strike two. And the 1-2. And Tip will foul that near the Loretto dugout, keeping the count of one ball and two strikes. Great house here tonight. A lot of fans out here in a good feeling evening. Not much wind to speak of. And if you're from the Midwest Chicago area, you wear shorts and a sweatshirt. <laughs> so this is a hot summer afternoon. Yeah, exactly. One, two. Good take. That one misses low, evens up the count here. Two balls and two strikes. Hey, one thing the Mustangs have really surprised me with tonight is when they've gotten behind in the count, they've been at least the top half of the order, they've been really patient. And they've gotten down 1-2, 0-2 oh, on a couple of occasions. And, you know, Carter Daniel worked yep. a walk. We've seen some other guys getting some favorable situations. You know, the, the lone run came off a, a walk that was uh, Clint Seymour's second time getting walked. Swing and a miss there for strike three, and that's the first out in the inning. Strikeout number eight by Reed in the game. Going to bring up Kaysen Springer, the right fielder. 0 oh, for 2, fly out the right in the first, and struck out swinging in the third. And also, don't forget, we do have Santa here. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Bundled up. Yeah, you know, he's, he's going to make sure all the little boys and girls know he exists, even, <laughs> in, even in April. First pitch here from Reed. Swung on a miss for strike one. I feel like we've, we've almost – Jinx Springer, we've talked about how hot he's been all year, and tonight's 0 for 2 already. Hey, not a better time here to put a barrel on the on the ball, though. Z01 swung on a miss for strike two. Well, the way he's swinging, I mean, hmm. one, one swing will be all they need to get the lead back. Just gotta gotta find the ball first. Almost looks like changeups that read through there, maybe a two seamer there that Kaysom was a bit ahead of. He's been doing a good job of getting the breaking stuff to work away from the left-handed batters. Springer now stepping out. Back in. And here comes the 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Reed. 
Bottom of the sixth inning, he's got nine in the game. Brings up Clint Seymour. Seymour has walked them both of his bats in the first and fourth and scored the lone run for the Mustangs in the fourth off a double steal. Big A.B. It seems that, you know, when Clint gets going, usually the, the, the team seem, <coughs> seems to follow behind him. There's mm -hmm. a late inning rally right here needed. And he's got some pop. Seen him go yard here before. First pitch. Misses away for ball one. And it's not sneaky pop either. He's, he's, he's tend to go, you know, yard a couple times. And no batting gloves. Got to love it. One up. Old and school. <laughs> that one's in there for strike one. One and one the count here with two gone in the bottom of the six. And the one one. Whew. In there for strike two. A little delay on that one. One and two the count here, the three oh hitter for the Mustangs. Seymour Grounder here to a short throw He's over the first. Good pick there by the first baseman for Arlington, and that one will end the inning. Three up, three down for the Mustangs in the bottom of the sixth. Game tied in one as we go to the top of the seven next on the X Sports Network. I'm Mike Keith, and my friends at Elliott Johnson Insurance have a great partner in Auto Owners Insurance. Auto Owners makes it easy to get life, home, car, or business insurance. Let Elliott Johnson Insurance find the auto owner's policy that makes a difference in your life. Call Elliott Johnson Insurance at one of their three locations, Florence, Loretta, and Lawrenceburg. Elliott Johnson Insurance, moving forward for our clients every day. Being raised in Tennessee, we believe in the importance of family and community. Creating a positive experience at our family-owned and operated business is one of the ways we share that belief. Being in an accident can be extremely stressful. When it came time for my repairs, Mashburn's made it easy. I am lucky to have a wonderful company in my community like Mashburn's Collision Center. It's reassuring to know that I'm in good hands because their work is second to none. We pride ourselves that the Mashburn name is one of the most trusted in Lawrence County since 1981. Mashburn's Collision Center. Let our family take care of yours. Back here, Gary Landfield, top of the seventh we go. Game tied at one here between the Tigers of Arlington and the Mustangs of Loretto, 9-1-2. Do it for the Tigers. Meharry followed by Peeler and Hibbert. Dylan Thompson on through two and two-thirds of an inning. Has given up a hit, no runs, a walk, a pair of hit-by-pitches, three strikeouts, now at 35 pitches. First one is sent in the center field. Tragular coming in on it. Oh! And he's going to make the dive and catch in center for the first out of the inning. Huge play when you consider top of the seventh in a tie game, and we've got one gone here in the top of the seventh. So you see that replay. Good view of it right there. Yeah, absolutely. Good play there by Tragula. About Bring to call our guy up at ESPN and get that on the top ten tonight. Brings up Peeler, 0 for 3. Strikeout looking at a pair of ground outs. First pitch here from Thompson. That one is in there for strike one. Hey, I mean, right now, if you need any any momentum, right now is the time to get it, you know. Last inning of the ball game, and not it up. Somebody's got to score. Here's the 0-1. This is just out of the reach of Fisher over there at second. And the third hit of the game here for the Tigers, a one-out single from Pillard. Peeler, excuse me. Now I'm going to bring up Jackson Hibbert. Hibbert 0 for 2, hit by a pitch in the first, flew out the right in the third, and grounded out to the shortstop in the fifth. So he had reached base in five straight at bats against Summertown and Loretto, and they've gotten them out the last two. The biggest one might be right here. Pinfield a double play depth. Tibwell third playing even with the bag. I'm going to check on Mahoney and who? 
And we have Hayden Buttram at first now. And that one got Mahoney bad there. Or Meharry. No, it's a pitch runner. No, it's a peeler. I'm all, <laughs> all out of the whack here. Call as many games as we do in a week. They all just kind of run together. And, you know, you mentioned Babe Ruth. I mean, you do like – Felt like we did 20 games in each day. Yeah, you know, th th those do run together. Well, some of those Babe Ruth games <laughs> felt like tw we did 20 in one day. Next pitch is fouled. That one will get out of play. And you know, for y you had it worse than most of us. It felt like you'd get to the ballpark at about 10, and then <laughs> hopefully you'd leave by midnight. Now that with, Kevin, with the weather delay. Kevin Wright gets there at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> he get there the yeah. day before to set up. Oh yeah. Well, we watch like movies during that I rain say, delay. We had some rain delays. We popped some movies up there in the press box. <laughs> we did. Here's the 0 1. That oh. one's going to hit him. And that one hurt. And that is his third hit by pitch. And now we got 2 1 with the one out here in the top of the seventh. So Buttram was the one warming up. He's now at first base. And that brings up Jack Pitts, the first baseman. Pitts, who's 0 for 3, pair of ground outs and a strikeout. Those things don't have anybody in the bullpen. You'd only assume they'd take Carter out maybe as a, as a close appearance. but Well, yeah, they'd had Hayden warming up uh -huh. in the previous inning, so they might be bringing him in because yeah. of that. You know. right. Not That's sure. Good though. call. And then I would assume if, yeah. if they moved that, they would move Springer to first and then Pomps into the outfield. Here comes David Weathers out to have a conversation with Thompson. Thompson's done a great job coming in for Mason Tibwell. Tibwell, who did a great job himself. So the pitching has been very good for the Mustangs in this game. Only run is a ball that uh, they might have found on the practice football field. <laughs> An absolute crush job there by <laughs> McKay. And, hey, if, you, if you'd like to have anybody out there talking to you to ca calm you down, you'd like it to be yeah. somebody with 20 years of big yeah. league ball experience. And your head coach has got big league ball experience. Yeah. And you got another coach with some college experience. And then you got Nick Moore. <laughs> He's there for the toughness aspect. Yeah. <laughs> Bryce Glass, his, his <laughs> football assistant coach, is loving that, loving that one. I was trying to get a pop out of Bryce, and I got it. Hey, Nick does a great job running Game Changer. I'll give him that. <laughs> Keep keep me uh keep me keep going with the stats in Knoxville. First pitch here from Thompson. That one mm. just misses away for ball one. That one's been called the strike tonight, but yeah. again, you know, the, these late games, that strike zone, it can get bigger, it can get smaller. Comes a one up, swing and a miss for strike one. That's a big pitch right there. It seems when Thompson gets gets a guy with a, a, an ugly swing and miss like that, he's coming right back at you. Done it all night. And then living on that outside corner. It's like we saw in the first game, seeing a lot here in the second game as Pitts will call timeout. Double play ball would be nice here, especially know, knowing who's on deck. The 1-1. One, one. Foul back for strike two. Now, AJ, say you get a strikeout right here. Do you think you walk McKay to put him on? I mean, with, with as well as well, he's hit. Fowler singled in his last to bat, and, it, and he had a big game in the first game. I, ooh, it's a tough, tough one there. The one two. Just misses away for ball two. A lot of tension here. We've we haven't had many of those moments in this game. We've got one right here. Two two. Mm. And a check swing foul back. Count will stay where it is. Battling. And we've had a ton of ABs like that tonight. Both teams have 
shown some really, really patient ABs, but also, you know, when when you get behind, you got to battle. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Foul back again. And this, this AB at the end of it, it it's going to come down to who wants it more. Mm -hmm. Thompson, he's, he's, he's looked good tonight. He's gotten in some some jams. We'll see if he can get out of one more. But for Arlington, they're trying to sneak out of here with two wins. Pitts calls time again. Got a battle of wills here, battle of the minds. Got the physical game, and then you got the mental game on top of it. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled out of play again. That was the seventh pitch of the at bat. I'd say you're talking about it being tense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you you can feel it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's hardly a peep out of the crowd. Another 2-2. Two -two. Runners take off. Swing and a miss for strike three. Throw over the third in time. And that one's going to end the inning. I'm going to strike him out, throw him out to end it. Huge play here. Raleigh Ellis getting the strike him out, throw him out, along with Dylan Thompson, and that one will end the inning. Mustangs going to try to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh as we check out the replay here. It's a swing and a miss. Oh, yeah. yeah he, got he got him, him on the yeah. foot. Yeah. Got him on the foot. Yeah. Bottom of the seventh, that's coming up next here on the X Sports Network. Got primary care? Find your way to better health with primary care by One Stop Medical. With decades of combined experience, you'll find a one-on-one -on -one relationship just like the old days, but with the convenience and technology of today. When One Stop Medical does primary care, it's the best. Call today for an appointment and find your way to healthy living. Serving Lawrenceburg, Pulaski, and Hohenwald. Phone 931-244-8220. Primary care by One Stop Medical at its best. Are you looking for the perfect refrigerator? What about a new stove or washer or dryer? It only makes sense to shop at the one place that specializes in appliances, top to bottom, big or small. And that's Kelly Appliance in Lawrenceburg. Kelly Appliance is home to all major name brands, including LG. LG makes life good with a full selection of refrigerators, cooking appliances, dishwashers, microwaves, and more, including appliances made right here in Tennessee. Family owned and family operated. Stop by Kelly Appliance on Jerry Street in Lawrenceburg today. Back here at Gary Landfield, bottom of the seventh here. Four, five, six, do up four, Loretta. Tied and one here in Arlington. They try to walk it off. Carter Daniel, 0 for 1 in the game. Ground out to short in the first and had a great at bat in the fourth to force a walk. Nathan Reed on for his seventh inning of work through six. One hit, one run, three walks, nine strikeouts. Right now at 89 pitches. Let's see what we get right here. Pitch 90. And a big cut from Carter fouled away for strike one. You know, there's always a saying you can't you, know, you can't win the game on one pitch. Right here you can. You know, one pitch over the plate, and the Mustangs got a couple guys with power yep. coming up. You know, you got Carter, Miles, and then Jaden yep. Aaron after that, who who has a home run this year. Reed now resets himself. There is no wind, unlike the first game where the wind was blown in from left. Slightly out to rot. Here's the 0-1. Ground ball. Here to Hibbert at short. Throw over to first is in time, and that will be the first out of the inning. One gone in the bottom of the seventh. Can bring up Miles Moore, the left fielder, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Looking for some redemption here with one gone in the bottom of the seventh. And what a time right here. I mean, redemption, you know, 0 for 2, and you know, you've had some, some close battles. You know, if you're going to win one, bottom of the seventh in a tie game is when you're going to do it. Oh, look at this hustle. Yeah, the Fargus. Oh, man, come on. If you're going to sprint off, you can sprint off. 
Yeah, you can't do that in front of Santa. That's Coles in your stocking. <laughs> First pitch here from Reed. That mm. one misses in for ball one. Close to wearing that one off the shin. Yeah. Yeah. Base runners are base runners. There's a one up on the inside corner for strike one. And again, AJ, that looked like that two-seamer changeup action. I mean, that looked like Miles was about to wear it to the belt, and then it just broke right back mm -hmm. over the middle of the plate. Yeah. He's thrown out a lot in these later innings. A 1-1. One, one. Big cut. Foul back for strike two. We're now having a, head co having a conversation with his head coach and Zach Curtis. There's our game changer pro right yeah. there, Nick Moore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now they built him a desk over there just so he can do the game changer. You know, he almost broke a bar stool up here earlier today. <laughs> One and two, the count here to Moore. Just misses away to even up the count. Two balls and two strikes. Now we Doug, got the turf. Yeah, Doug, Doug out making some noise now. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that's a second out of the inning. Strikeout number 10 for Reed. Bring up the designated hitter in Jaden Aaron. He's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. I'll tell you, has, has Reed been a cool customer on the mound yeah. or what? I mean, I, I, bottom, yeah. of the, bottom of the seventh against a, a smaller school tie game, you know, if you let a, a small school like Loretta hang around, you know, they're liable to beat you, but he has looked comfortable here in the seventh. Moment not too big for this man. First pitch here. Swing and a miss for strike one. Jaden trying to recreate his hit from last Tuesday night. Yeah, he's a pitch 97 now. Whew. You don't see triple digit pitch count for high school guys a lot. This pitch swung on a miss for strike two. This Ray, we're going to be spending the night here. <laughs> kind of feels that way. Of course, that means my son's going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the 0-2. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that one will end the inning. Three up, three down for the Mustangs. We now go to extra innings. Top of the eighth, do up, one all game next here on the Exports Network. Truett's Garage Doors in Leoma, Tennessee is your one stop for new garage door installations for all commercial and residential buildings, plus they offer full service on all existing doors. Need a new garage door opener? Truett's Garage Doors has you covered. As an Amar Gold and LiftMaster dealer, Truett's Garage Doors offers the best pricing anywhere in the area. A family owned and operated business, Truett's Garage Doors has been helping Tennessee and Alabama residents since 1999. Call the pros today at Truett's Garage Doors, 931-201-6464.
Back here, Gary Landfield. We go to extra innings, top of the eighth. Game tied in one here between Arlington and Loretta. Kaysen Springer, new pitcher in the game here for the Mustangs. Grant Fisher goes from second to third. Mason Tibble goes from third to short. Clint Seymour from short to first. And we have a new number 34 at second base. I don't have a 34 on the roster. It looks like 34. First pitch here from Springer. This one is big swing and chopped foul down the left field line for strike one. Springer comes in for Dylan Thompson, who went three and two-thirds innings, giving up two hits, no runs, a walk. Three hit by pitches, four strikeouts, and finished with 48 pitches. And, A.J., that looks like Caden Rogerson out there at second. Caden Rogerson at second base. I call him Washington. Why do they call him Washington? He's from Washington. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. We keep we keep the nickname simple. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah. Hey, at least you're not speaking over someone's head, you know. <clears throat> oh, one from Springer. Big cut and foul back for strike two. And a little bit of a new look, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the first left-handed pitcher we've seen this game, mm -hmm. so those those left-handed batters are gonna have to adjust. The first left-hander that. Uh, Arlington has seen in either game so far. Didn't see any against Summertown. And you, you see 14 innings of right-handers. You go right to a lefty. I mean, that, that's a big adjustment you got to make late in the game. 0-2, oh, and that one is over his head for ball one. The big difference between, uh, you know, pro ball and high school ball, you don't have the ghost runner on second to start yeah. extra innings. Makes makes you earn it. But, you know, I – I believe it was Lawrence County and Tullahoma. Lawrence County had a huge top of the eighth. Mm -hmm. Five runs. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the first out in the inning. That was a big out. Strikeout number 11 by Mustang pitching. Got him the chase on the breaking ball away. Yeah, they got five runs there after tying it in the top of the seventh and five runs in the top of the eighth. Well, fortunately for the Mustangs, they don't need five runs. <laughs> just just one. Just one. Got to get there first. It brings up. Britt Fowler, one for three. Single in his previous at bat in the sixth inning. First pitch, just misses away for ball one. And Raleigh held it there for a second mm -hmm. to give the umpire a second to choose if he wanted to call it. Might have been a coach or two ejected if I did call that a strike over at Arlington. Here's a one up. Misses away for ball two. So that pitch looked a little more outside than the last one. It's so a 2-0 in there for strike one. Here's a 2-1. Misses in. Hitters count now for Fowler. Three balls and one strike. Three one. Misses away for ball four. One out walk. Brings up Peyton Goolsby. The right fielder is 0 from one. Pair of walks on a strikeout looking in the fourth. It's the third walk issued by Mustang pitching in these seven and a third innings. Yeah, they're not giving up many free passes. Now they might hit you in the head a couple times, but they're not gonna walk you. <laughs> Shoulder, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. They'll find every way to hit. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch. This is away for ball one. We haven't seen many square around the bunt situations uh, or even any attempts. Some Mustangs had one I think a few innings had, ago. I think Arlington may have had one early in the game, but you know, they have not tried to play small, small ball. It's the one up. In there for strike one. It's an interesting spot for Springer. You know, he's, he's having to face a couple left-handed batters. Pretty good lead at first. Yeah, decent lead. Now we're going to check on him. You know, again, you got Seymour at first now. He 
Jenkins. He's played there a little bit, not too much. A 1-1. One, one. Foul. Off of the net in Santa's direction for strike two. One ball, two strikes here to Goolsby. Here a little hustle back, AJ. Yeah. <laughs> get the Prince out yeah. there to get the ball. He had a little hustle back. Yeah, he's, he's working hard on those foul balls. We've had a lot off the net in this game. They've been making contact, just nothing squared up really except the the one. This one sent oh. off the middle, off Springer's glove. Rogerson tries to make a play and uh -oh. throws it away. Going to throw to second. They're going to get him out at second. And they're somehow going to catch a break. And now we got a runner on third with two outs here to bring up Tucker Bearden. Almost how you drew it up. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> you got an yeah. out out of it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, when, once that goes off Springer's mitt, I mean, that's a, a, a wonky play. And Mustangs catch a, a huge break there. But a, 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 who's that that made the throw to second? Yeah. It might have been as Raleigh. Yeah, Raleigh that was a that was a, a laser. So two gone. Now going to bring up Tucker Bearden, the catcher. Zach Curtis, head coach, going to make his way out to the mound. We, we don't have anybody warming up, so he's yeah. going to give it to somebody that's already out there. He's, Springer's having a look at his hand. I mean, that that, that came back at him pretty hard. Yeah. So I mean, it definitely didn't feel too good, and especially how cold it is. Yeah. Game started at about 65. Now we're down on the low 50s. He's, he's, yeah, says he's, he's okay. good. Yeah, says he's good. Again, another multi-sport athlete. I mean, he, he's a tough one. We got a, one of his basketball coaches up here that will attest to that. Uh, Beard. Yep. Springer's going to get a couple warm-up throws in here just to Make sure he's okay after taking that line drop. There he is. A game changer Hall of Fame. <laughs> he's probably getting a little yeah. more attention than he'd like yeah. tonight. <laughs> We've been up here a yeah. while, though. So. Yeah, we have been. Trying to have some fun with it. So runner, runner on the third base, two gone here in the top of the eighth inning. Big moment right here. First pitch from Springer on the outside corner for strike one. And the 0-1. Fouled away for strike two. One strike right here, and the Mustangs get another opportunity to try to walk it off. And with the with the bottom half of the order, too. The 0-2. Ooh. Just misses for ball one. Yeah. You, you can tell home plate umpire was shaking his head before the Raleigh even made the catch there. So that was just a bit, bit high and outside. Yeah. Comes a one-two, sent foul down the right field line. I guess while we, mm -hmm. uh, final from Knoxville, Tennessee six, LSU three. Got to mm. keep the boys in orange updated yeah. down here. <laughs> one and two, the count here. This one is fouled away. Back to three straight foul balls now here. Starting to run out of baseballs. <laughs> as uh, Raleigh just got pelted from his, <laughs> his own dugout there. Looks like we got Lucas Laxon warming up in the bullpen for the Mustangs. Yeah. And he's he's usually their typical closer. And again, we've gone through a, a bunch of pitches, a uh, bunch of pitchers as well. And he, having to get down there in the lineup. Mustangs on their third pitcher. Don't know what Arlington's going to do in the bottom half of the inning. Here's another one, too. Sent in the center field. Dragula doesn't have to move much, makes the catch, and that one will end the inning. 
The Tigers strand another runner on third base. Mustangs have a chance to walk it off in the bottom of the eighth. That's next on the Exports Network. All Over Wellness and Massage, located in Pulaski, Tennessee, is your premier spa for massage therapy, salt therapy, IV therapy, tanning, and much more. Stay relaxed, look your best, and feel good at All Over Wellness, located at 1187 West College Street, Pulaski, Tennessee, or contact Haley at 931-309-0462 or schedule your appointment online at 931massage.com. If there ever was such a thing as a company that could do almost anything, well, Tenneke Properties is it. These guys know how to completely transform your existing home into something new or just do it room by room. Need a new bathroom or kitchen? What about a fresh coat of paint? Even a new floor? Looking for dirt work? Tenneke has you covered. Oh, and you can even rent a dumpster from them too. That's Tenneke Properties. Visit Tenneke.com or phone 931-244 New pitcher in the game for Arlington here in the bottom of the eighth inning will be Jackson Hibbert. He's a shortstop. Peter Peeler, Parker Peeler, <laughs> will go to short from second. And Reed Meharry will go from the designated hitter to second base. Jackson Tragill will lead things off 0 for 2. They ground out in the pop-up in the second and fifth. First pitch, and that one is in there for strike one. And the 0-1. This is in for ball one. You hear about 70 where it's right there off that one. <laughs> Here's a 1-1. One -one. And that one's tapped foul out of play for strike two. One and two to count here. The 7-0 hitter for the Mustangs. Raleigh Ellis on deck. Looks like he's swinging Babe Ruth's bat <laughs> in the warm-up circle. One, two, swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the first down in the inning. 12th strikeout by Tiger pitching. Now brings up Raleigh Ellis. Ellis 0 for two, fly out to left in the second. The ground ball to short in the fifth. It's the first pitch, breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike one. That's the second time he, that Arlington's pitching staff has gone first pitch breaking ball to Ellis. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss for strike two. This kid's going to work quick, too, on the mound. And the 0-2 on the outside corner for strike three, and that's the second out of the inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts from Hibbard. Brings up Grant Fisher. Now the third baseman again. For sure, 0 for 2, a pair of strikeouts. Be something to have your nine hole walk it off. First pitch here from Hibbert, and that's going to be a 
Fastball that missed away for ball one. 89. Wow. Hmm. That's the thing about playing big schools. Velo doesn't drop off when you get to the mm -hmm. bullpen. Here's a 1 0. This is away for ball two. Especially with Hibbert right here. You know, he's he, he's got that, you know, kind of in your face personality. He's right at you. But as fast as he's working. 2 0. This one's going to be shot in the right field and down for a base hit. How about that? The nine-hole hitter comes up with only the second hit of the game. First hit the Mustangs have seen since, since the first, AB, the of the first AB of the game. An infield single by Mason Tibwell, who, by the way, is up at the plate here. He's one for three. Singled in the first, grounded out in the third, and struck out swinging in the sixth. And I don't know if you caught that, A.J. Hibbert was not happy to give up that hit. Yeah. You know. so we get a... Pitch runner into the game here for Fisher. Will be Braden Bennett. Go out there and run. And Bennett's done plenty of pitch running for some pitchers and some catchers this year, so he's he's familiar on the base pass. First pitch here to Tipwell, breaking ball in the dirt for ball one. And the 1-0. Oh. Mm, that's a good job framing that one. Oh, Ooh. wow. He missed away for ball two. I guess that one was mm -hmm. low. Yeah. Or outside? Dang. Question mark? <laughs> it Ooh, missed. Really good framing. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, really good pickoff. Two and another count. Pitches low for ball three. And, and they can complain. The Arlington faithful can complain about that. That's the same location as the last one. And I, I, the low fastball worked early in the game. I guess he's moved the zone up a couple inches. And that, that was right at the knees. Uh, it's too close. <laughs> three up. That missed for ball four. Back-to-back -back base runners with two outs brings up Kaysen Springer, the opposing pitcher. And now we're going to have a little meeting on the mound. And the head coach for Arlington is not happy at all. He, he has a, a good right to yes, be he, a, a yeah. little aggravated. A couple yeah. of those pitches were 50-50 calls, and there were two pitches, and he didn't get either one of them. It's not like your pitcher missed <laughs> miss the spots or missed them by much. I mean, they're all right there. So play the umpire making his way out to the mound. Jonathan Moody, the head coach for Arlington, make his way back to the dugout. So Springer, who is 0 for 3, a fly out to right and strikeouts in the third and sixth innings. Two on, two out. Winning run at second base. The form of Bennett. And you got a trio of sophomores. You got a sophomore at second, a sophomore at first, and a sophomore up to bat. Let's see if they can, these underclassmen can walk it off for the, for the Mustangs. Runner in scoring position. First pitch in the dirt for ball one, <laughs> right at the shoe tops of Kaysen. And that one had some zip on it. Yeah, it did. The 1 0. Springer, ground ball. Uh oh. He struggles with it, and he is out at second base. Good job there with Meharry to stay with it and make the play at second. So we will go to the top of the ninth inning, game tied at one here. That is next on the Exports Network.
Shop McMaster's Home Gallery for furniture, appliances, and more. And shop quality, shop convenience, shop service, shop local. A family-owned business with a long history of serving the region. We're a one-stop home furnishings destination. We feature brands you know, competitively priced, backed by professional installation and service. You can trust that we'll take good care of you before and after the sale. For your home, shop smart. Shop McMaster's Home Gallery today. The Summit of Lawrenceburg is the premier senior and assisted living community in the region. The Summit makes it home for you or your loved one with diverse suites that welcome and encourage community, plus gathering spaces, neighborhoods, daily activities, and a wonderful staff that supports you every day. Hi, I'm Tara Blue. I'm the new director of the Summit, and we would like to invite you and your family to come into our facility. We would love to see you here. And back here at Gary Land Field, we go to the top of the ninth. Game tied to one between Arlington and Loretto. 8-9-1, do it for the Tigers. Slade Williams will lead things off. 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts and a hit by pitch. Kaysen Springer on first, second inning of work. No hits, no runs, a walk and a strikeout through 19 pitches. First pitch here, that one misses for ball one. I'm probably saying that was just outside. Here's the one up, and a foul ball towards the first base coach who tries to go all Ronaldo on us and whiffs for strike one. Here's the one one. This is yep. low for ball two. Well, if it was low last inning, it's yeah, you know, it, right. it needs to be low here. Yeah, I agree. Got to got to call it fair. Two one. And this is low for ball three. This is the one one pitch from Springer. Ooh, <laughs> that that was that was knee level. Yeah. Three one. This is low for ball four. Lead off walk here for the Tigers. Brings up the second baseman in Reed Meharry. 0 for 3. Strikeout swinging in the, excuse me, strikeout looking in the second. Tapper back to the pitcher in the fourth, and they fly out the center in the seventh. Fisher at third, playing about two or three steps in on the grass. Middle infield at double play depth. Outfield playing shallow here. Squares around the bunt. First pitch gets away from Ellis. And a rare wild pitch from either pitching staff. See, I think both I, th I think that's Loretto's first tonight. Yeah. So runner on second base here. Game tied to one. Nobody out in the top of the ninth. And the only unfortunate thing for the Mustangs is, you know, Arlington's wild pitch, nobody on base. Mustangs wild pitch runner on first. So Seymour now playing on the grass. Now Ellis will come out and have a conversation with Springer. Still believe that's Laxon warming up, and it is in the Loretta bullpen. Looks like an Arlington fan had to go get his nightly coffee. <laughs> There in the distance, or he's just scouting Lucas awkwardly in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we're going to see them in the playoffs. Yeah. Here's a 1-1. That's a bunt. 
Springer's going to make the play, and everyone's safe off the infield bunt single. Yeah, that, that, there wasn't much you could do there. It was a good play by uh, Meharry to put a bunt down the third baseline because either the play at three or one was going to be awkward for Springer, and now they're runners at the corners with nobody out. And the top of the order back up. He's a Parker Peeler, one for four, single in his last at bat in the seventh inning. It's a strikeout and a pair of ground outs in the game. This is a bat number five for him. Ellis gives out the first and third as signals. Looks like a yeah, had to get his, get play. his plays. Will, are you going? You gonna go steal all, signs trying now? Trying to do all FBI on us here? What are you doing? If you hear a trash can, it's yeah. not us. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch here from Springer. In there for strike one. Some of these pitches you can't tell if he's saying it's outside or a strike. Yeah, regardless of the outcome of the game, I don't think either team can hang their head. I no, mean, no, this has been a well, well played game, well pitched game, well defended game. Springer, a long look at the signs. The 0 1 squares around the bunt. <coughs> Misses away for ball one. But uh, the leading run on, on on third for Arlington, it's kind of su surprising to see the middle infield for Loretto so deep. Right. You know, a ground ball up the middle would for sure score that run. Pick off a temp here first, not in time. The one one. Mm. Ball two. And this strike zone might be the size of the baseball yeah. right now. Yeah. Oh man. If you think if anybody'd be ready to go home, it'd be the umpires. <laughs> <laughs> this is inning number fifteen. <laughs> Our guy in the field added another layer in between innings, <laughs> I think. Here's a 2-1. That misses away for ball three. Well, we don't get to the 40s till 1 a.m., but, again, at this rate, yeah. who knows if we'll be here or not. We're getting a fair share yeah. of late-night baseball are, here, though. We are. There's no way, other way I'd rather spend a Friday night. It's a 3-1. And that misses away for ball four. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out. Now again, you don't like the bases loaded in a tie game with no outs. But it sets up a force out at every every base. So Brings up the opposing pitcher in Hibbert, who's 0 for 2. Does have a pair of hit-by-pitches in the game. Fly out to right and a ground ball to short. So the infield. I don't know if Rogerson knows to play in or not. Now he's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say yeah. everyone else Double is in. checking, yeah. And then we're going to play on the grass. First pitch. Hit in the air to right. He'll make the catch. Oh, I think he dropped it. Or did he drop? Well, what we got here. Run scores. What they say? Are they saying he dropped it right? Yeah, they're saying okay. he's out. So well, he's then, out. And the Arlington fans. If he, well, are, if he's out, that dude needs to go. Uh, yeah. Didn't tag up from third. Yeah. I th I think he did. Tag up from okay. third. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Everyone else moved up a bag see here yeah yeah I mean it's it looks like that was in mm -hmm. the transfer and for will play in it's a 2-1 Arlington lead 
pitch from Springer, and that one is fouled away for strike one. Brings up Pitts, who's 0 for 4. A pair of strikeouts and a pair of ground outs. Mustangs trying to get out of this inning with a, as minimal damage as possible. And the 0-1. Swing and a miss for strike two. The 0-2. Ground ball down the left field line. That's a base hit. One run is in, another run is in, and that is a two-run single, and Arlington leads it 4-1. to one. Yeah, you, you get to a couple extra innings here. That's when attrition starts to set in as a, you know, as a, as a lower classification school against a bigger one. But, but a good base hit right there. Good effort by Fisher, and that was just out of his reach. So one on one out. We've gotten three runs here in the top in the ninth. Brings up Carter McKay, one for four, has that solo home run to right in the fourth. First pitch from Springer. And it's a ground ball down the right field line for strike one. And even a, a, a ground ball that's foul is hit hard by, by this guy. Here's the 0-1. In there for strike two. Arlington fans have not been shy to be vocal here in this game. If you're coming to Loretto, you got to be. Yeah. And props to them for, for traveling this far and bringing some good fans at that. There's a swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the second out of the inning, as Raleigh forgot that was just two. Oh, it looked like the, the batter yeah. did too. What is going on here? I, yeah, that was yeah, Sandy. Well, yeah, he's I out. Mean, I mean, he clearly went around. There's no argument on that one. Second strikeout for Springer brings up Britt Fowler. One for three. Reach base in his last two at bats, a single in the sixth, a walk in the eighth. Seems everybody's getting a little tired, yeah. <laughs> even on the field. First pitch, foul down the right field line for strike one. Zio one. Hit high in the air. That was the best bat flip of the night. Yeah. <laughs> a pointless fly ball. Why would you do that? Anyways, that's the final out of the inning. Arlington gets three in the top of the ninth. Lead a four to one as they try to close it out here in the bottom half of the inning. Next on the X Sports Network. Efficiency. Reliability. Accuracy. Move forward with your real estate sale or purchase with title and escrow of Lawrence County, the most experienced closing team around. Working with clients locally and throughout the state, we offer a wide range of services, including the expertise of an on-staff attorney backed by our more than 49 years experience in titles and closings. We get the job done on time at a fair price and ensure every last detail is correct. Our goal is to give you peace of mind. When you work with us, you work with people who live where you do. We understand the importance of the real estate community and strive to build strong relationships with all parties involved in the process. Whether you're buying a home, selling a business, acquiring land, or anything in between, you're in good hands with title and escrow of Lawrence County. Put the most experienced closing team on your side. Contact title and escrow of Lawrence County today. Clint Seymour to lead things off here for Loretto in the bottom of the ninth as they trail Arlington 4-1. to one. 
be followed by Carter Daniel and Miles Moore. Well, if you, if you need three two. runs, these are your three guys you want up. It's Rogerson, actually, oh. that will be on for Daniel. First pitch here from uh, Hibbard is in there for strike one. Hibbard got out of a jam in the eighth inning with two on. Next pitch, breaking ball, misses low for ball one. I forgot of the bullpen that, that has such good velocity on his fastball. I mean, his breaking ball has no drop off. I mean, its break is, is tremendous for a high school guy. Fastball misses for ball two. Two balls and one strike here to Clint. That one's in there for strike two. Two and two to count the Seymour is 0 for 1. Pair of walks on a ground out. 2-2. Two, two. This is away for ball three. There's a full count offering. Swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the first out of the inning. 14th strikeout by Tiger Pitching. Now brings up Caden Rogerson for his first at bat of the game. We'll have Miles Moore on deck. First pitch here from Hibbert. Breaking ball, and that one is in there for strike one. This guy doesn't take a pitch off, I'll tell you. Z01, swing and a miss for strike two. <clears throat> and the 02, swing and a miss for strike three, and that's the second out of the inning. Fourth strikeout for Hibbard. Final chance will be Miles Moore. First pitch in there for strike one. Moore is 0 for 3. The 0 1. Swing and a miss for strike two. And the 0 2. Moore is going to rip this one in the left field. And a good catch there by the shortstop and Peeler, and that one will end the game. Final score, Arlington wins this one in nine innings, 4-1. to one. They improved to 15-4 and four overall. Mustangs are going to drop to 12-4 and four after the loss in what was a, Michael, a very well-played game and a very competitive game on top of that. Yeah, I mean, for, for you know, you don't want to lose a game if you're Loretto, and to lose one in that fashion, it, it really hurts. But, I mean, you can't look at anything from this game and not think positive because you just faced one of the best teams in the state, you know, and, and a big school that had to travel, come, you know, come and face you. I mean, it, this shows that you can go play in the postseason and, and make a good run. So, I mean, you know, props to the Mustangs for hanging with them as long as they did. It's just attrition really kicks in when you, when you got a big 4A school like Arlington coming to play a, a smaller school like Loretto. Next game for the Mustangs will be right here on Monday evening as they take on their rivals from Summertown. First pitch will be at 6.30. So for oh, – also, Loretto's got a game tomorrow, Davidson Academy. I'll, I'll, I'll be here for I that. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> this is what happens when they, you do back-to-back -back games and one goes into extra innings. Your mind just goes blank. So there will be Davidson Academy tomorrow at 2 o'clock, then Summertown here on Monday at 6.30. So for Michael Marks, for our producer – Extraordinaire, the man, the myth, the legend, Big Daddy, Will Pettis. Big Poppy, my bad, <laughs> Will Pettis. This is AJ Good on the X Sports Network. Have a great evening. Going the distance with local sports. This is the X Sports.